اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاه واتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ورضي الله تعالى عن الساده التابعين وعلماء العاملين وائمه الاربعه المجتهدين ومقلديهم الى يوم الدين اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته everyone Alhamdulillah, we welcome you to and thank you all for joining us for this latest edition of the Black Imams Roundtable. Alhamdulillah, we've been predisposed for the last few weeks. So what I need y'all to do is to share this video far and wide. Share the link on your page, YouTube. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever y'all at, share the link to this video because a lot of people may not know that we back. So you all have to let our family know that we are back with a very relevant topic, even though a lot of people think the topic is not relevant. But before we get into it, alhamdulillah, I am Naeem Abdullah, the Imam of Masjid al-Mukmin in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Above me is Imam Fahim Lee, the Imam of Kuba School and Islamic Center in Camden, New Jersey. Right next to him is Imam Amin Muhammad of Masjid Muhammad of Atlantic City. And our brother right next to me is our illustrious guest, uh, Yusuf Kroma. I, I'm hesitating. I don't know what uh, title to put in front of it. There's a lot of titles I could put there. Just throw them all there. Islam, Mufti Atlanta. <laughs> you could put Miskeen. Kabiruna, Kudwatuna, Al Alama, Al Hujja. Pick it. Any of it all works. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. He, he blessed Malik us with his presence. Here, anyone you like. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. He blessed us with his presence once again, and we are happy to have him here. Well, alhamdulillah. So, hey, listen. How many weeks did we miss? Because we don't usually miss no weeks. How many weeks did we miss? You sure it was only one? I think it was two. We missed two weeks. So listen, we missed two weeks. We have to make it like we didn't miss two weeks. We got to put in two weeks worth of work today. We have to put in two weeks worth of work today. So inshallah, what we normally try to uh, raise, we need to double that today really need to triple it and i'm sure we could do that and that's not the, uh what we want to focus on but i need you all to keep that in mind you know normally we normally we ask you to uh everyone to uh contribute at least ten dollars when you come in but we ain't been here for just a, a, we ain't, we missed two weeks and this is the third week so inshallah, we're going to ask y'all to contribute thirty dollars. Since you've been saving all of this money, all of this, all this time, right? Alhamdulillah. So, so that's that. We'll get back to that later. Inshallah, we won't have to get back to it because it'll be taken care of. But uh, today, well, alhamdulillah, we are going to talk about not about a person, but the impact or the discussion or the response of our Muslim community to the death of a person. We're going to be we're going to talk about what we what we call the Kevin Samuels trigger. What's a trigger? Sometimes when certain people are mentioned or when certain subjects subject matters come up those things may trigger us. In other words, it 
uh, it provokes a response in us, usually anger or rage. You know, when we say, you know, that's a trigger for me. Believe it or not, this man, Kevin Samuels, is a trigger for a lot of people. And so what we want to talk about today, as the title suggests, we want to analyze the Muslim responses to Kevin Samuels' death. Now, Kevin Samuels, just to give you all, I'm not going to get too deep in the beginning, just because a lot of you don't know who Kevin Samuels is. Maybe you just heard about him for the first time last week, or maybe you still might not have heard of him. Kevin Samuels was uh, a popular YouTube influencer. Some of you might not know what a YouTube influencer is. You know, you have all of these type of uh, social medias that we interact on. Like, I think most of our people that engage with us, most of us, we operate on Facebook. But just like a lot of us interact on Facebook, you have a lot of people that interact on Twitter or TikTok or Instagram and, of course, YouTube. So you have whole communities on YouTube that normally interact with each other. And Kevin Samuels have built up a large following over years. He was really like an uh, image consultant in, a, in his early days, you know, what type of clothes you should wear, you know, how to dress, those type of things, right? Then uh, a lot of these people on these social media platforms, especially like Instagram and YouTube, like when their following gets big, you know, they find their niche and sometimes they morph into other things. And so uh, Kevin Samuels, he kind of like morphed into like a, a, a dating consultant. And he used to, almost exclusively give dating advice to men. A lot of people don't know this. He, almost all of his content for a long time was only to and about men. Basically his message was, hey, you gotta get your weight up. How you, how you gonna try to, you know, get you a fine, you know, beautiful, you know, good earning, high class woman and you a dusty dude. Right. And so he basically he would tell people, you know, step your game up. You know, if you want a good, good woman, good sister, step your game. up. Step, you know, get your weight up. Then about a year ago. A woman called into his show. And the show had to do with some something about, you know, disagreeing with him. You know, people have themes to their shows. And so he had this theme where you can call in and disagree with him. But this particular woman called in and basically wanted dating advice. So he said, you know, I'm going to use this thing as a teaching moment. And so she asked for advice, talked about what type of guys usually come at her, what type of guys that she, that she wants. She gave a little bit of, of back, background information about herself. And he said a lot of things. But he says, but you're average looking at best, right? So, and so like you want these fixed six figure men, but there's really nothing about you that attracts a six figure type of man. And that went viral. And that's when most of us heard about Kevin Samuels about a year ago, after that uh, clip of that video went viral. And so from that point on, you know, he got a lot of scorn and a lot of vitriol from black women. And his name became synonymous with being a misogynist. Look how he talks to people. Look how he talks down on people. He told that girl that she was average at best. And a whole bunch of other clips went viral after that. And then he got to the point where he had 
million subscribers on his YouTube channel. And this stuff morphed to other stuff. He got, you know, acting gigs. There's a TV show coming out. He's on it. Uh, he got interviews. He was on Vlad TV. You know, he was, you know, so he, you know, his, his, his money grew. His influence, his money, his platform, all of that grew behind that one clip. And so on May 5th, he died. He died in his apartment, and he was with a woman, and uh, she called uh, 911, and they found him unresponsive, and he died. And so, of course, someone that evokes so much emotion in people, just Black people in general, not, not exclusively Muslim, but including Muslims. Like when he was alive, some people loved him, some people hated him. And likewise, when he died, right? Some people was like, good, he's dead, right? And other people was like, you know, like mourning and sad and all, all these type of things. And so uh, this, we're not, we're not here really necessarily tonight to talk about him, but obviously in order to uh, understand, you know, uh, the subject matter. We have to talk about him, but what, what we really want to focus on is on the response of the Muslims to his death. And so I just wanted to just give that uh, kind of like general, because you know, I don't want to assume that everybody knows who this person is. Like some people only use social media. They check into broadcast that they like. Some people don't stick around on social media to see all oh, what's going on and stuff. So some people don't know who Kevin Samuels is. So anyone who just comes on YouTube and Facebook to, for the Black Emails Roundtable, you may not know. So that's just a summary of who this person was. And you may not have even caught wind of the rhetoric for and against this person. So I just wanted to open that up with uh, a little bit uh, about him, inshallah. And I will pass it on to Imam Fahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa minata bi ahum bi ihsani ila yawmadeen wa ba'd. Alhamdulillah. What up, fam? We back, baby. You know what I mean? We've been going for two weeks. They try to fill our slot with one of them off-brand shows, you know what I mean? But this is the Black Imams Roundtable, baby. We back on prime time. Did y'all miss us? You know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, it's good to see you all. Let's double up on the uh, donations, you know what I mean? Pay that cover fee. I, myself, I paid for two weeks plus for two of y'all. Y'all got this y'all chance to beat me, because any other time you can't beat me, so you got to try to match me tonight, you know? Alhamdulillah. Uh, so it's good to see you all back. Hope everyone had a great Ramadan. And uh, hopefully in this month of Shawwal, we are uh, observing the six days of fast, inshallah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, this is a very, uh, as Imam uh, Naeem mentioned, a very uh, sensitive topic. Um, and I just want to uh, first shout out the brother that I met at, um, at Six Flags, um, Abu Rayyan. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. And there was another brother. Uh, he, he ran up on me in the uh, parking lot. <laughs> he was like, I think his name was Suleiman. Uh, I, I don't know if I got the name right, but he was like, yeah, he said, you don't know me and I don't know you, but, uh, and you did say it, don't run up on you, but he said, uh, my name is Suleiman, if I think it's, that's his name, and I just wanted to acknowledge you. So that was love, man. So uh, um, if I got your name wrong, brother, I apologize, but it was good to meet you nevertheless. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor you. I mean, alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, so this topic of Kevin Samuels um, um, is very timely because it did trigger a lot of responses from Muslims. You know, it went from, you know, and observing uh, the responses, it went from, uh, from what I observed, a lot of men were kind of like very uh, on defense, you know, very, you know, defending Kevin Samuels and like almost as if like, you know, talking bad about him was like talking bad about a Muslim, you know? And it was like a lot of women were just kind of, um, uh, not necessarily against him, but just annoyed at at his um, at his delivery, you know. And that's what I got from him because, you know, I took the time to um, listen to him. I, you know, I listened to him, some of his clips here and there. And uh, you know, 
1.5 million subscribers and a blow up like that. He wasn't just talking out the side of his neck. You know what I mean? He was he was talking he was talking some real good stuff. He made some real valid points. And my view of him when I first heard him, you know, uh, you know, I had a view like, you know, this guy is a little, you know, as Fred Sanford would do. He was, he was <laughs> that's what I got. You know, I ain't gonna say the word I said, but he was a little. That's what he came off with me. But he had enough of a soft touch where he can talk to women in the way that he did talk to them. You know what I mean? Where it wasn't really offensive because what I was thinking about was um, how are all these women still calling the show? Like you had to see the last episode. You had to see how, you know, straightforward he was, how sometimes it was, and you know, offensive and how he would just cut you off. And, you know, I remember seeing clips of his show where he's like, you know, I'm not, I don't got time for that, you know, and stuff like that. Or he would say stuff that was just straight out, uh, it might have been offensive, but it was funny. You know, I mean, I remember one case he said, uh, he told a woman, he said, you know, like, you know, he would have uh, things where he would ask women how tall they were and, you know, how old they were and, you know, the age, you know, all that stuff. And then uh, I remember one particular woman said she was about 5'5", five, five, and she weighed like 180 pounds or something, right? <laughs> he said, uh, he said, you know, if we were to stretch you out, you would be a, a offensive lineman, <laughs> right? I was like, yo, this boy cold, man. <laughs> like, and he just said it with a straight face, you know. And then another one, he told a woman, uh, you know, he was, <laughs> he said, she said after two kids, and I think she was in her late thirties, that now she wanted to be celibate. And uh, you know, he said, uh, you know what? <laughs> he said you should be trying to get out of way. You know, <laughs> I was like, yo, he was cold. But I think because of the soft touch that he did it with, it wasn't offensive. And I think in 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 light of this whole attack on, you know, masculinity in these times, you know, it's like very offensive for a man to say things to women like that, you know, and everything is offensive. And I think one of the things that he that I'm observing a few of his things is like he as as he had, you know, really held men accountable for like, you know, for you to be the, you know pay the cost. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. You know, if you want a woman to be under, you know, like you don't really, and in other words, he's kind of said in a roundabout way, like you don't get any respect, you know, for women because you're not really in the position to take care of them. And then one of the things that I think with women that he mostly addressed is that he really kind of like gave them a harsh reality check about their expectations, a harsh reality uh, uh, check about their expectations of what they want from men. Because in these times, you know, women are being conditioned to, you know, to climb the professional ladder, you know, to kind of like be on equal par with men or surpass men, you know, especially in financial in the financial world. And then what they're finding, and like he addressed this a lot, is that you don't have the kind of men that you're looking for that you think that you're worth when you reach a certain level. Those men are not available. You know, I just I was listening to a clip today. He said was saying something about that women just have to really some women when they get to these uh, certain levels in their professional careers, you know, they, they think they, they post a deserve a type of man and he's just not there. You know, so like you have to work with what you got, because sometimes these women they become, uh, you know, uh, I deserve this and uh, I'm, I'm supposed to have this and, you know, it doesn't matter. Well, and then one thing I was listening to a clip today, he said, uh, he said something very important that a lot of women, when they're doing all of these things about their money, what they got in their housing and their professional status, like to a, to a man, that doesn't mean as much as it means for you to be like humble to the man, be yielding to the man, you know, be his partner. Don't get to a position where you're combative and you feel like you're competing with him and that you have to surpass him. You know what I mean? And that's the feeling that, you know, and, and I'm a few things that he used to say, like, you know, you want this kind of six figure man and, you know, this kind of stuff. But if you are in this situation where, you know, you've had previous situations, you have a number of kids, your, your biological clock is ticking. The kind of man that you're looking for is not looking for you. You know what I mean? In that kind of world where people are, you know, defined by their status and by their financial state, they're not really that kind of man is not looking for you. But all men are, are are kind of the same in the kind of woman that we want. Like, you know, like if a man is older, you know, he's not really necessarily looking. He's looking for someone that's like his peer or maybe younger, you know, or he's looking for someone that can match him and that can compliment him and not be combative. And uh, one of the things he said today, and I, I find this to be true, 
uh, in my experience of counseling a lot of couples, that you find a lot of women, and he, um, especially like with older women, he said they always seem to be like complaining about things, about how things are not right, and then they're not ready to be yielding because of these, sometimes these uh, these exaggerated expectations that they have in the men. And then the other part too, is that many women, they get to these levels that then they want this traditional kind of man, you know, this masculine kind of man that's gonna take charge and run everything, but then he has to come across a woman who's just, just gonna be countering him at every path that he crosses, you know, and that those kind of men are gonna end up running away, you know, and they're gonna, then you find these kind of men with these women who are seemingly lesser than them in status, you know what I mean? Because these women are appealing to them. They're appealing to these kind of men, you know, and uh, he, I mean, he touched on a whole bunch of subjects, you know, and um, like, I never really got a chance to really research him too much or, you know, go too deep into his talks, but just some of the stuff that I'm, you know, I've heard him say, like, I'm like, okay, you know, the boy's on point. Like, you know, I mean, he's not a, a person that I would, um, that I would have, you know, looked to for like advice, you know what I mean? But some of the advice that he said that if a man that was, it was confirmed that he was, you know, and he said in a little like more like, like a feminine tone, it, 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 it would have went over well, you know, or if another woman would have said it in a soft voice, white or black, you know, they would have received it well. But, you know, especially with our women, black women, you know, they just been conditioned to just want to counter everything. Everything is an argument. Everything is, uh, you know, tr you know, just all of this stuff. And that 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 is a big turnoff. You know, that is a big turnoff for men that every everywhere we go, it's like we got to kind of have this kind of combativeness with our women, you know, and women don't understand this, that this they said is a man is like a cat. You know, if you chase him, you know, what I mean? he's going to run away, you know. But if you leave him alone, he'll come purring at your feet. And women haven't, you know, some women haven't learned this. You know what I mean? Let them, you know, chasing him is always having words at him, saying words that impact him. Then he shuts down in his expression and his affection and how he's going to open up to you. Some of the things that you're looking for, you're going about the wrong way to get in them because of your approach. Always telling him what he should be doing, what he's not doing. He should be doing this, what you deserve. He's not a real man. All of these kind of things, they um, they have an impact on men. And men are not really ready to, you know, most men are not ready to openly express these kind of things. They'll just internalize it. And then it had turned them off from women. So they just kind of shut down. And this is something, you know, Kevin Samuels, he kind of dressed in a certain way that, Men are not looking for what you have all the time. And contrary to what women these days are trained to think, like if they got a, a, a banging body and they got money and they got all this kind, they got their own place, you know, some men that, you know, that attracts, but a man is looking for a woman who's going to, you know, you know, stroke his ego and make him feel like that he's the man that she wants him to be. And a lot of women, they, you know, and I'm just saying in my experience, they crush a man's ego where he just, He's just totally unresponsive sometimes in a relationship. And then it leads to where he figures like all he is worth is trying to provide. And if they got children, take care of the children. Then it becomes like a routine. And then there's no real connection what the women are looking for. And sometimes what they're looking for, they have to be able to yield a little bit to let, you know, bring the man along. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so I never, you know, I, I just thought sometimes his delivery was straightforward and sometimes it was harsh, but he, he said a lot of uncomfortable truths that needed to be said that, and, and I think why a lot of, a lot of men were feeling it because if we were to say it, I mean, we would be canceled. I, he, I was listening to a talk early. He was like, you know, everybody want to cancel somebody, you know, but these are things that need to be said. You know, if any of us would have a platform, we talk to women like this, we would be canceled like automatically. But yet he was able to, you know, build a whole entire platform, you know, and, um, you know, he and certain women, you know, like I talked to other women, you know, we discuss these things and, you know, some of them were unbothered by it, you know, because they knew it didn't apply to them because there was a, like a, there was a kind of prototype of women, women that he had on his show. Like, cause you would listen to some of the dialogue. You'd be like, you know, I, a couple of them, I'd be like, why, why would this woman call in knowing that, you know, She's like, she's, you know, she's going to be a victim. Like you already know you're going to be a victim. Soon as you tell them your age, 
As soon as you tell them how many kids you had, if you've been in a relationship, because there are certain things like, you know, I remember one clip he would say, well, if you all this about marriage and being celibate, why did you marry your, your, your kid's father? You know, or he would ask them deep questions like, well, what, you know, how was your family? How was your relationship with your father? Things like that. Why didn't it work out with this relationship? What's going to be different? And some of those things uh, that happened, you know. So, I mean, there was a lot of, um, you know, things that, you know, it, it was good and bad, you know, but he was no different from anyone else who would say straight things. I mean, he just he just looked good saying it, you know what I mean? You know, he was, you know, finally dressed all the time. You know, he had his manicure, you know, he, he, he expressed himself well. I mean, he knew what he was talking about. He had stats. He had, you know, he had uh, uh, research uh, references that he, he mentioned. And, um, you know, but at this at all, you know, but as Muslim men, you know, we know uh, we honor women. And, you know, normally we don't talk to them like that. But in the back of our minds, like, yeah, man, good one, Kev. <laughs> good one, Kev. That, I wanted to say that, but I couldn't say it like that because my masculine energy would have, it would have came out the wrong way. So thanks, Kev, for carrying that for us. But, you know, you shouldn't have insulted a woman like that. You know, you know, you don't talk about a woman about her age and about her size. You, that's just a no-no, you know. So, um, but in any event, um, you know, he has some benefit from it, you know. And uh, all the people, you know, the more he talks, I mean, the more you talk about him, the more people are researching and searching him online. So he's going to be eating even while he's dead, you know what I mean? Or his family will, you know what I mean? So. Uh, so, but it, it was really surprising of how, you know, it had the kind of effect of the COVID argument with Kevin Samuels, like either you were pro or anti, like if you were pro Kevin Samuels, it was like people wanted to block you and delete you. And if you were anti, it was like, you know, it was some, something that's wrong with you. And then it was very, uh, you know, we spent too much time on a person, you know, you take what he had good, you know, you put it against the Quran and what the Prophet Islam said and what was good, you take it. What wasn't good, you just, you know, you analyze it. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have to do muhasaba on ourselves all the time. How did this apply to me as a man? How does it apply to me as a woman? Is it really true that, you know, you know, if I'm over 35, I'm not really as valuable as I think I am because I went to school and I got this and all that. But then the kind of man that I think that I deserve, you know, he just he's not looking for me, you know. And you have to come to a reality with that sometimes, you know. And um, those are some hard truths that he talked. You know, I don't want to take about uh, you know, take up too much time because we might cause a trigger here, you know. And uh, I don't, you know, we can't we can't get canceled, <laughs> inshallah. So I'll stop there and um, with uh, give it to our brother Yusuf Homer, inshallah. The triggering already got started. <laughs> That's okay, mashallah. Yeah. Oh, you mentioned the COVID thing, the vaccine thing. I I was going to mention that later. Same type of response. Election season, voting, not voting. Same type of response. No. Yep. Once people get triggered, they're not thinking. No. Yep. I'm sorry. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So the question is, why are we talking about Kevin Samuels? Um, I see that all in the comments. I saw that on some Facebook uh, pages and discussions. The man was relevant. He had social commentary that was triggering, but it was relevant. And I think is at least worthy of a conversation and discussion. Uh, and why is it so triggering the things that he's saying? I think if he was just a foolish individual, completely foolish with nothing to offer, uh, a fool's words don't necessarily trigger you to the extent that Kevin's saying, the impact that he had. So I think there's some merit to the things that he was saying. I think on the surface, what's bothersome is his delivery. Uh, and at times his disrespect and at times his disregard of people's feelings and people's emotions. I think undoubtedly that's true. And uh, as Muslims, we don't um, agree to that methodology of communicating, of denigrating people we don't agree. But if you just put that aside, I think that people are making the same like he was, uh, you know, like we were taking him as our, our great sheikh or something like that. No, he's a man who had commentary and we are discussing the impact that he had and also the triggers. So Kevin Samuels, and just from an entertainment perspective, from a, a, a solely marketing perspective, it was genius what he was doing because people love uh, disrespect. They love rudeness. It's not, he, didn't, he was not the first person to come up with this formula. If you look at the most celebrated judge on American Idol, it was Simon Powell, 
who would look at a person on millions of viewers and tell them, you can't sing, you can't dance, you know, you're, you know, and just humiliate people on national TV. And people loved it. They enjoyed it. They tuned in every week just to listen to Simon Powell, you know, denigrate somebody's dreams, but nobody blasted him the way that they would blast Kevin Samuel because he's talking about things that's more triggering, I think, in a black community. And some would say because he's a black man. I'm not sure if that's the case. Rudeness is rudeness, disrespect is disrespect. But what I would like to talk about is the real the reality of there being a huge gap between uh, the, one, the number of um, single black women in our community, the number of eligible men uh, or the lack thereof to say, and why aren't their marriages happening? And why aren't qualified, quote unquote, qualified women, women with high net worth, women that are seemingly nines and tens or whatever the case may be, why aren't they getting married? So what Cameron Seville did, you know, quite openly was have the conversations that brothers have and quiet, you know, of course, with a bit more tact, but, you know, that we wouldn't necessarily get on a member or get on the, the microphone and say, because it would just be distasteful. But in reality, there is a, a, a rubric, a number rubric where brothers say, yo, sisters are, are and sisters do it too, by the way, uh, you know, and it's clear as in media, you know, I remember, you know, uh, back in the day, there was a song where they say, uh, this and I don't want no scrub, all right? <laughs> scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me and the passenger of his best friend, right? You know, so there's a, there's, a, 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 there's a system, there's a rating system. Is the brother over six foot? Is he earning a certain amount of income? Does he have children, does he, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we do, we do live in a society where looks matter, where there are ratings, where, you know, these things matter. So if you lack self-awareness, if you don't know who you are, where you're standing with regards to that spectrum, it's going to be difficult to find the spouse and the person that you're looking for. And that goes both ways. So I think uh, he set the platform for some very deep conversation that we can move the ball forward. We don't necessarily have to take his tact or the way that he did it. But I think there was some merit to the things that he was saying. Um, and the first thing about that was he was a proponent of marriage. So if we're talking about marriage. We're talking about looking for spouses in our particular communities. There's, a, there's certain baggages. There's certain um, obstacles. There's certain things that we need to discuss in a very raw and real way, way no holds bars manner that we can peel these layers back and get to the crux of the matter without being rude and disrespectful. But sometimes, man, like, you have to really shoot straight to the point for people to get the message. And I think we need to find a balance between doing that, being straightforward, uh, and hurting people's feelings. I don't know if you can even do that or not, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to try to make it so. So I'm not for Kevin Samuels. I'm not against them. I am an open ear. They said that knowledge or wisdom is the property of the believer. Wherever we find it, we take it. And as one of my teachers says that you can take the meat and leave the bone. You can take what benefits you and leave off what doesn't benefit you. So, you know, I, I spent like a, some, a few hours just listening to his rhetoric, listening to the conversation he was having. A lot of truth he was saying. A lot of things was uh, I, I didn't necessarily agree with the way he delivered. We talked about that. But I think that there is some, some room for conversation to discuss, to reanalyze some of the things he was saying and move the conversation forward. Wallahu ta'ala adnam. I'm going to pass the rock. Alhamdulillah. Before our next two brothers speak, I just want to once again call your attention to the title. Because a lot of people in the comments saying, why is he relevant? Why are we talking about it? We're not talking about him necessarily. We're talking about us, our response. We're analyzing our response to his passing. Why, why are we talking about him? I don't know. Maybe y'all have different Muslims on your timeline. I know when he passed, that's all I saw on my timeline. And I got mostly Muslims on my timeline. So I don't know about y'all, right? But, you know, this is the Black Imams Roundtable. And we talk about stuff that are relevant for Black people. So, you know, if Black people, Black Muslims are talking about it, it's relevant for us. It's on people's mind. We're going to discuss it. Um, maybe some of y'all, some other type of people, them other type of Muslims that pretend like y'all got like this, this this schism in your mind where you pretend you don't know what who Kevin Samuels is when you're around Muslims, but when you're not around Muslims, you know exactly who it is. I don't know if that's the type of people we got going on here, right? But, you know, everybody's talking about it. And I believe his subject matter is relevant because all on our 
person personal conversations and on our online conversations in the black Muslim community, we are talking about marriage. Why we can't marry, get married? Why we can't have sisters? Why sisters can't find good husbands? Why brothers can't find good wives? You know, I can I can drop another trigger for y'all right now. Five thousand dollars. Some brothers is triggered right now. He's talking about the $5,000 dowry, right? We having the same conversation in the Muslim community without even Kevin Samuels. They, they, he's just talking to non-Muslims and dating and all kind of stuff like that. So the conversation is relevant. Right? You know something? It, it reminds me of, like, I was reading Surah to Yasin yesterday, and how when Allah Ta'ala would send messengers, they would say, Ma antumila bashrun mithluna, like, you're not, you, you're just a man just like us. We want the malaika. You know, send us the angels because if you have a man that's from your people that speak your language that knows you, he's going to get in your business. You know, he he knows you, so there's no escaping. And so you want us to talk about something that's not going to reach at home. But this is a real conversation that's happening in our community, in our masajid, in our schools, in our public gathering. It's happening. It's a, re a reality. So pretend that oh, Muslims, we can't talk about Kevin saying like says who, says who. I, I never read anything in any book of Sharia that said you can't discuss relevant conversation. Like, why are we acting so holier than thou, so fake? Like, we can't discuss Kevin. So what? Why do we need to justify? Because we want to talk about him. Yeah, exactly. Know, what's, the, what's, the, what's the issue? We we don't need no justification for that. Uh, so, uh, I think I think yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Five K dowry. Who you marrying? Steve Harvey's daughter? <laughs> <laughs> if you think about the five K dowry discussion, it's the same discussion that. You know, made Kevin Samuels popular. What when we talk about 5K diary, right? What we talk about? Get your weight up, stop being dusty. Same stuff, right? Hey, I got canceled from the Negro Sunni uh, organization because I said a five thousand dollar diary. <laughs> hey, I got a sister on my page. She made a stat. Uh, clown and brothers who uh, start talking with foreign accents, right? Right. Mm -hmm. They ain't never been nowhere, but start talking mm -hmm. with foreign accents and stuff. Maybe that's the type of conversation they want us to have. We, we they want us to talk with foreign accents mm -hmm. and you know talk about stuff that's not relevant. Right. If that's what you want, you come to the wrong place. The wrong place. You, you need to go to them foreign accent brothers who ain't never been to a foreign country. Go to them. Yeah. Go, to them all, go to them all. Go to them off-brand stations. That's not prime time. This is prime time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Foreign accents talking about foreign topics, which they which many times they're not very familiar with. Kevin Samuels, this passing of Kevin Samuels is uh, is very relevant to our community. And uh, it's a discussion in our community that we had before Kevin Samuels, but it was just simply masked and said a different way. Right. And it's only now that not just Kevin, but he grabbed the limelight as far as. Uh, making making a voice for certain for certain premises to be said out in the public out in the open out on facebook out on uh, youtube or whatever but these issues have been talked about we've talked about them we talked about them in the uh, barbershop we talked about them at the basketball court now the women sisters included uh muslim and non-muslim many times they haven't been privy to the conversation but brothers we have had this conversation with one another with one another now now, Kevin may have started this conversation and he's long gone, but we're going to finish this conversation. And now it's time for the sisters to come in. Let's be civil. We can and continue this conversation because really Kevin's message was simply have the conversation. I never agree with every premise uh, that he promoted. And I think he's dead wrong on a lot of things. Right. But that's, that, that doesn't stop the message or what he tried to do, what he tried to do. And he was abrasive. I, I give him that. He he didn't always have the best approach to things, but he's gone. We're still here. And it's about marriage and building communities and building families. And we can't have generational wealth until we build families. We're not. We're not going to have generational wealth until we start building families. It takes more money to raise a child with, in a two-parent household than it does with one. So uh, I kind of jumped into the uh, conversation, into the fray. Uh, just waiting my turn, but uh, let me begin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ya Adina amanu. Ursukum bi taqwillah, bi taqwillah wa husn al-qur'an. All right. Um, so, uh, 
the passing of Kevin Samuels, the triggering uh, for myself personally. Uh, uh, Kevin professed many times to be a Christian. So as a Muslim, uh, his passing is like that of other non-Muslims that pass, right? Um, those Muslims that felt uh, they needed to, to say, uh, Allah have mercy on him and this, that, and the other, but that's on them. Right. Uh, me personally, it was like in, like any other non-Muslim that passed. I grieve for his family and I hope Allah Ta'ala uh, uh, comforts his, uh, his family that are living, his wife and his daughter. Right. And, uh, but Kevin Samuel's passing for me, um, uh, if it wasn't for a few brothers, I might not have known. Right. I, I might not have known my my timeline did not blow up uh, like Imam Naeem's did with uh, all the comments and everything about his passing and in his death. I caught up later on uh, on things, but the, the he was a man just like any other man and imperfect at the same time. Right. He's not he's not perfect. He he's not Rasulullah. So a lot of said everything that he said is not the gospel. He plenty of mistakes. But he brought something that we needed in our community. And I've been trying uh, behind the scenes with the imam to bring this conversation up behind the scenes with the imam. Like, listen, we need to have a conversation. I hear the sisters' complaints. I hear the brothers' complaints. I've been listening to them for a while, right? There's some smoke going on. There's some miscommunication. And we need to fix it and both sides need to hear each other not just listen for for their turn to speak actually listen and unfortunately that hasn't been going on for a while all right and uh i'll give my turn to imam i mean muhammad uh to hear him out i'm gonna mute myself all that soft stuff you're gonna stop you ain't going to be behind the scenes talking all that reckless junk and then get online and be like, oh, you know, sisters are, come on, bro. We ain't doing that. Okay. Gotta I got to respect it. I got to respect the platform. Wall. <laughs> this is the Black Imam's round table. Whoever got too much sensitivities got to go to another station. We just kick it here. All right. <laughs> okay. And now let me go to my pious introduction. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm sorry, I gotta have fun with you. You know this, it's just me. All right. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ar Rasulillah. I'm really, I'm going to reserve my speech till I see that we're being too fake as a black imam's round table. And what I mean by that, all y'all know me, I just put it out there. Right now and I'm on probation, so I gotta be careful what I say. But if y'all don't spark this up, I'm going back to prison. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna say what I gotta say, right? So uh, my probation officer, I'm trying to stay out of it. <laughs> With all that being said, I never personally heard much of Kevin Samuels, except from brothers that mentioned him and my own brother, who's a man's man in his spirit. So I listened to him and we had a lot of conversations. A lot of y'all don't realize we be having these conversations. We just ain't having them with you. We having them, right? We have these conversations all the time in the morning you can be Sheikh I mean Imam I mean whatever you want to be but when you go in mixing with your people you somebody's brother somebody's nephew somebody's homeboy somebody's cousin and we talk we're black so no subject is off the table in our communities and I wanna give all of you some advice, right? All of us, some serious uh, advice. 
Stop faking. It's not helping us. Acting like you pious when you're really not. Strive to be pious. I don't say don't strive, but cut it out. Cut it out. Really, for all of us, it's not helping us. Right? All of us, men and women, have our choices and our selections and our standards. Every single one of us. Just as Kevin Samuels would say to a woman, you're average. There's some women who say to men, you're average. Am I right or wrong? Let's be honest. We're having a conversation. We ain't going to play games. Are yeah, there not. women who say they're men average or below average? Yes or no? Period. Yes. And yes. they say it loud and clear. And they don't bite their tongue about it either. Yeah, tell you so, quick. Ew, nigga, you, you smell like French you, fries. <laughs> if, uh, Sayyidina Sheikh Yusuf mentioned the TLC song, I Don't Want No Scrub. How many women were singing that song when it was out? They still mm -hmm. singing it. Did, did it come out in 2014? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if that is a sentiment of some women, mm -hmm. then some men have the same sentiment, mm -hmm. right? right? Brothers sit back and they have those conversations. Now, if we're going to have a real conversation, there are men who look at certain women and say, I don't want her. <laughs> Period. That's mm -hmm. real. So the idea we all Muslim, we all pious, and that's a great idea, but it's not a reality. Some of us are not pious. All of us fall into sin, but some of us are living, walking sinners. That's how we live. That's real. So some of us sin and repent and then sin again, then repent. There are some of us that most of their life is sin. That's a reality, right? Mm -hmm. See, I can't really talk on this stuff. Right? You know <laughs> you, you have a about? person. I'm going to ask y'all. Yes, you can talk, man. Don't be scared, man. You the man of the, the Black Man's yourself. Roundtable. Man, man you're not going to talk. Probation is meant to be violated. You with somebody else. Right? People <laughs> get violated every day, B. Right? <laughs> Listen, be honest. As imams, how many of y'all have seen a woman or a man come to you and say to you, I want you to marry me and my husband or me and my wife. Have you ever heard that? Often. These are imams. Mm -hmm. All right, let's listen to that. I want you. You froze, imam? Two. Marry me, yeah. I'm um, we're poor at Masjid Muhammad, they don't donate enough, so the internet goes in and out, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so if you want to donate towards me getting better internet in the Masjid, <laughs> Island was island, right? Uh, so think about this, right? What's wrong with that picture? Let I speak English pretty good, I'm not like the reader, but I'm pretty good, right. <laughs> Marry me and my wife. Marry me and my husband. If y'all, yeah. if that's your wife and your husband, why y'all need to get married? Mm -hmm. So our mindset is that we're fornicating partners, but we're married. That's my boo. That's real stuff. We deal with it on the. That's three imams at the top. Yusuf, you ever heard that in your travels? Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, so he's a teacher. Imam, he gives khutbas, right? Farouk, you have given speeches. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. how, but you did it, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You've heard that, though, right? Mm -hmm. So this is real stuff, mm -hmm. right? So don't act like that don't happen, right? So when we're talking about Kevin Samuels, let's be real with what we see. The things he talk about, all of us experience, all of us talk about it. All of us know about it. But we get in our Islamic religiosity bag and act like it don't apply to us. And some of us are doing the same thing he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So it is relevant. Mm 
it is relevant. Mm -hmm. So anyone who says it's not relevant is delusional. Mm -hmm. because just say what relevant. it is, Imam. Just say what it is. We get into our feelings. Right. They've been seen brothers and have gotten into their feelings. And what is delusion? Mm -hmm. Thinking something is a reality that's not real. That's right. So, so since we're having this conversation, let's have it because we have it anyway. And that's the purpose of the Black Imams Roundtable to have real pertinent conversations that affect us as a people. Now, I'm going to make it quick because I have to go pray. And but I want to say this I said something before. And I say it a lot. Whatever affects black people affects black Muslims. Please, can we put that up? Whatever affects black people affects black Muslims. Can, can all of us put that in the chat box mm -hmm. so we can think about that? Mm -hmm. Whatever affects black people affects, bla affects black Muslims. Mm -hmm. Some of us won't even admit we black. So they, everybody ain't gonna type it. <laughs> So they won't. It, there's still some people that say, "Why you got to have the black emails roundtable?" Mm -hmm. So, now, what, so what I what I also see creeping into the conversation is this whole, "I only follow the Quran and Sunnah," right? That that whole conversation. So yeah. it's mm -hmm. like we we have a perfect example in the Quran and the Sunnah of what marriage looks like, and Kevin Samuels isn't a part of that discussion. So how dare we use him as a metric mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be? Like, as I mean. Is that same? How do we debunk that that conversation all over again? With regards I, I, to I will right. I think about yeah. this. We have a perfect example of the way to have a perfect union, Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. Realistically, how many of us are really following Quran and Sunnah in our personal relationships? To begin with, yeah. Be be honest. How, how many of us? even know Quran and Sunnah, which I don't agree with that term, know the fiqh of the Quran and Sunnah to apply it properly. Or the fiqh of marriage, like, right. let's, let's talk about that, yeah. So we don't even study enough to even say that. It's just a slogan that has no real weight. And we're working on that. But what I, what I, what I want to say this though, let me quick and I'll stop. Since that's the case, I know for many people talking about Kevin Samuels, I watched him immediately get angry. Soon as you say, Kevin, I watch people who don't even know him get angry. What you angry about? You don't even know who he is. Just what they heard, right? So you're not angry at him because you don't know him. So there's something he's talking about that's triggering us, as Imam Naeem mentioned. So my point is, what is that thing? Let's discuss it. I know for sure, I know at least five, what does he call it? A high, what do you call them, men? A high value? Yeah, I know at least five high value women that I can't pay for find a husband for them. Listen to what I said. I know at least five high-valued women that I can't pay nobody to marry them. Why? Can we can we talk about what a high-value woman is? Can we start there? Start okay, there? we're going to go there. I'm just bringing. Mm. Likewise, I know high-valued men. I'm talking about Muslims. I'm not talking about non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Muslims. High-value men who can find a suitable mate. I know sisters, I got it going on. I know brothers, I got it going on. Why are you single and why are you fornicating? A real conversation. You got all this stuff. Why are you single and why are you fornicating? But are they That's, both having the same issues? Right. This is something we got to discuss. There's a reason. Are they both having the same issues, though? Yes, they're both having the same issues. You're a high-value man. You're not married. You're a high-value woman. You're not married. Why? If you're so high-valued, then what's the problem with you finding a match? A suitable match. That's something we should talk about. I'm going to stop there. I'm mm -hmm. just giving food for thought. I have my opinions on all of that. And 
Each woman will have why she say it, and the man will have why to say it. I saw, and I'm going to close with this, a high-value man, a high-value woman, Muslim. I tried to put them together, and both of them was like, oh, no. Wait a minute. What's happening here? Both mm -hmm. of them was like, mm -hmm. absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And then I've had women come to me, be like, I've been single for five years, ten years. Find me a husband. I can't. Nobody want to marry you. <laughs> what I'm going to do? And I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I can't find you a suitable spouse. So we should have that discussion. So maybe y'all can go in that. Define high value. Mm. Let's find what that means to us. And mm. I think this is a conversation as black Muslims and black people to all together. We need to know what is our standard that we collectively can agree on. And I'll stop there. I think if we're going to go in that direction, we should talk about because the show is based upon people being triggered by this man, we should talk about when, in their context, when he and people like that speak about how high value, what they mean by it. Mm -hmm. And us as Muslims, when we say high value, what do we mean by it? And we need to be honest, because I think some of us, when they say they, when they say someone is high value, meaning the non-Muslims, I think some of us Muslims, when we say high value, we got the same definition. No, no. No, no, no. Let, hear me out. Yeah, that's yes. true. I think in reality, we got the same definition. Oh, okay. But I get what you're saying. In platforms mm -hmm. like this, we pretend we don't have the same definition. Mm -hmm. Highlight the word pretend. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think... There's I think, a lot of pretending going on. Because I think one of the things that we do is that when we say high value, we are defining it by Western standards because a lot of times we're striving for this high value stuff that Islamically, it probably has no value. You know, we're working on bigger homes, bigger money, bigger jobs, a profession, a career. But high value in Islam is having taqwa, praying five times a day, having wara, you know what I mean? Being scrupulous, scruple, having scruples about your behavior, how you interact with people, you know, how you are, you know, you see in marriage as an act of ibadah and not an act of competition of outdoing your spouse, you know, or being a man who's manly and being a woman who's womanly. You know what I mean? These are values that are, are that are praiseworthy in the marriage, you know, and and some of the standards that we're getting, you know, these things are problematic. You know, when you, you know, for instance, another trigger word when a woman says, you know, you hear this often, mm. a woman say, you know, you got to obey your husband. Mm. You know, what if, obey mm. my husband? Well, no, I ain't no, I'm not no dog, you know? Okay, right. well, be dutiful to your husband. Okay, let's change the narrative. But the same thing is yielding to your husband, allow him to be a leader, stuff like that. You know, and then for men, you know, you got to take care of your woman from A to Z. I don't know, she got to come already equipped. She got to have a house, a job, all this, all that, you know? And your responsibility is to take care of every everything from A to Z, you know? So we do have to have solid definitions that are, are going to be at odds at what, you know, because, you know, Kevin Samuels, to him, high value is wearing a $2,000 suit. That don't have no value for us as Muslims. You know how many throws we can get for $2,000? You know what I mean? I, I want to I, I push back against that. I want to push back against that. Go ahead. As, as, as someone that's in the, 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 uh, the, the field of making suits, if two thousand dollars mean the highest quality, means ihsan in the suit, something that can be passed down for generations, there is value and quality in ihsan. You know, value. Oh yeah, no, you know, I'm with so, you on that, but I'm talking about yeah. where you defining yourself by the suit, and that makes you something else that you're not. That's what I'm talking about. But, but because even, you could put a you could put a high value suit on a low value man. You know what I mean? Sure. That's sure. what I'm but talking even, about. But even the concept that we have that money doesn't matter, money does have value. Al mal wal banun zinat al hayat al dunya. That money and children are the is, is something that beautifies his life. The Prophet said when we ask, when asked, what can you get married for? Al mal wa jamal. He said money and beauty. So these things that are seemingly Western concepts, they also have a place in Islam in terms of what we're looking for in a quote unquote high value spouse. Money does matter. Looks does matter. There's there's relevancy to that as well. Uh, a man came to the Prophet Sallam said that he wanted to marry a woman and the Prophet Sallam said, have you seen her? He said, no. He said, go look at her. 
you know, so we pretend that, no, I don't want to see the sister as long as she have taqwa. And then, you, you, you know, you see the sister when the hijab come off, you're like, yo, call her wali, I'm send her back. You know, so we, that whole, this whole pretending that taqwa is the only thing that matters, a person has good deen, that's not the full picture. I think that we are human beings and uh, we should uh, we should take those things into evaluation as well. And it's not anti-sunnah or anti-prophetic tradition to do so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me push back on that. No, it's like <laughs> <laughs> so. So what no, do? No, you're so right, what, Shake. No, no, I'm feeling you. No, you're right. Mm-hmm. What do we consider high value? That's what I'm going to talk. Uh, let's say a, a high value woman. What, what What are some things that we consider when we say a high value woman? I'll, I'll write them down as well, so we can share with you. Know what I mean, inshallah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's let the audience de- uh, decide. Hmm. I think. <laughs> I think, I think they caught up in the conversation amongst say, themselves. I think we can all say, as for example, the hadith explicitly mentioned Dean and character, Dean and Kuluk, right? Mm-hmm. But I think now, you know, we need to break that down. What does having good Dean, good character look like? Because I think a lot of us, we confuse Dean and character with having knowledge of the Dean. Yeah. Yeah. We don't but, get but subtleties even, a lot. But even Shaitan before that, got knowledge. Kufar got knowledge of true. the deen. Mm-hmm. That don't but, mean you have deen just because you have knowledge of the deen. That's true. I think a lot of us get confused about that. So the brother, the brother knows a lot. He knows yeah. a lot of Arabic. She knows all the right mm-hmm. Arabic phrases. Okay, mm-hmm. she knows phrases that originate from the deen, but does she mm-hmm. practice deen? But correct. however, if, if we take the hadith in its entirety, it started off with mad. So let's talk, if we, if we our assessment, I'll, I'll give you guys if my assessment of the hadith. If we're talking about money, if we're talking about high value, maybe we may, may or may not agree, but a high earning uh, income, a woman that earns, earns a high income, is that valuable? Not necessarily. <clears throat> okay. Not, to to a man. Mm-hmm. Now, when we talk about these values, we have to understand that when uh, uh, if we're going to say what is a high value woman, that is mm-hmm. what is a high value woman to a man, not what a woman thinks she is or to another woman. What mm-hmm. they that's see, a good clarification. Not yeah, what yeah. they see. That's is, good. Is sure, what sure. High sure. value to us. Likewise, what mm-hmm. is a high value man in, in, in so much as what is it is to them? Right. Because yeah, I could say, you know, uh, uh, I come to m- uh, my wife to be and tell her that, you know, I'm 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 good at Fortnite on Xbox. Right. I'm the best there is. Well, th- that may not be high value to her. I can think I'm the greatest in something that she could care less about. So there's perspective to this. Right. And so, so when 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 the Prophet said, so what mm-hmm. are we what are we talking about then? How do we evaluate that statement? When he spent when the first thing he mentioned was money. Yeah, woman's the way money. I is understand money. that hadith mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that when he said Tunka Maratuli Arbaat, women are married for four reasons. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. way I had that hadith explained to me is that basically, just to say it another way, women are typically married for four reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. Her wealth, you know, her beauty, her nesab, her lineage, and her mm-hmm. deen. Mm-hmm. Uh marry the one with Dean if you want to be successful, you know. Sahih. You know. So does that mean that it the has other its category place. doesn't have merit? No, I didn't say it doesn't have merit. I think but, one point but, but I but I think uh, I think what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying sallam. is that the priority should be given to the deen, even though yes, women are typically married for all four of these reasons, and they all have their place. But no, uh, of course, of the course. overriding think, factor should be yeah. Dean. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody disagrees with that. I'm, 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 I want to talk about what is, what are some of the things that are overlooked in conversations that are not being had. Of course, we're going to say we. Any of you ask anyone, they're going to say, "I want somebody that has a good Dean," and we definitely need to talk about what good Dean means. That's definitely a conversation. But if you're going, I think that there's a merit to having someone not this because as men we as muslim men we know our responsibility our roles and responsibilities are providers but there's a merit to having someone that that has a, a that has a high income if you are a high income individual there's a merit to that as well 
Uh, for example, if we look at Sayyidina Khadija, how she utilized her wealth to then establish and help the Prophet ﷺ build the deen. A lot of the things that we saw in Mecca was funded by Sayyidina Khadija, couldn't have happened without her wealth. Even like uh, when Imam Nadim was telling me here, there was a, the masjid in the West and a lot of properties was, was bought by the wife of Imam Jamil. She was the one who funded the operation. He was, you know, just going over some things. So there's definitely some merit and some value to that. Not that we're, yo, baby, let me get the black car or the Amex so I can spend it. No, but if you're a man of vision, if you're a community builder, having someone there that could assist and that could help you build that vision. For example, there's some merit in that as well, is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so the conversation of, of wealth. And if, I, if I'm hearing correctly, unanimously, are we saying that that's not something that's, that equates to a high value woman? Is that what we're saying? Or high value, yeah, high value. If I may jump in on that, Sayyidi, I would say this, and I think this is this is the problem. We're talking prophetic lifestyle, but we don't live prophetic lifestyle. No doubt. No it's doubt. kalam without any haqiqa, mm -hmm. speech without real reality. Too many of us have no clue about how the Prophet life وسلم, really was, mm -hmm. how the life of Khadija really was, how the life of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha really was. Their life was a da'wah ilallah. Their life was calling to Allah. Not all this stuff that we talk about. So to give you a picture, a perfect picture of this, one time someone drew a picture of the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it was a nice house. So it was brought to my Sheikh, and he said, This is not the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that person, what he did was he looked at the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. He looked at the different hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and he collected everything he heard about what the Prophet had, and he put it in one house. So the Sheikh said, what they're missing here is the Prophet never had all this stuff at one time. Right? So that picture is not reflective of the lifestyle of the Prophet ﷺ, right? That's number one. Aisha described that the Prophet ﷺ, that sometimes in the house of the Prophet, there wouldn't be a fire lit for a whole month. There was no cooked food. Sometimes they would have dates and water. Now I want you to keep this in mind. This is the Prophet وسلم, who could have anything he wants. He could have anything he wants. The Prophet وسلم, could live like a king if he chose to. The Sahaba عنهم, would give him anything. But he, nor did he accept from his family to live that way. In fact, he told them, if the life of this world is more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger, I'll set you free. Don't forget that. He said that to them. If you want this world and that has become more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger, I'll set you free. That's the Prophet wasallam. So our modern context of what Islamic life is like is, is, is fogged, really. And so why I'm saying that, because that goes into what we consider high value. Because Khadijah's money was not used for dunya. It was used for da'wah and deen. The Prophet Wasallam didn't take her money to increase his world. He took his money and put it in the service of the, took her money and put it in the service of the deen. Now, I know for sure when that conversation is had with a lot of women, they bail out. 
they bail out quick. I'm not with that. My money is my money. Your money is my money. No, my money belongs to Allah and the religion, and so does yours. That's reality. That's the life of the Prophet. How do you think Abu Bakr's wife felt when he came to the Prophet and gave all of his wealth? We tell those stories, but we don't think about that. Abu Bakr, on more than one occasion, came to the Prophet and gave all of his money. Sayyiduna Umar, he came and gave half of his money. Sayyiduna Uthman, he gave a lot of his property, a lot of his money to the da'wah. What kind of women did they have? All right, we talk about them as men. What kind of women that were affected by their extreme giving to a da'wah? Do we ever talk about that? I, I want us to think about that. So contextualize. High value men. Man, you don't make enough money. In this doing by the American standards, I don't care how much money you got, you will never have enough money if we keep living like we live, right? You can have a six-figure, right? A six-figure income that's not enough if, depending how you live, right? So if we don't have a zuhud, we don't have abstinence and renunciation from the dunya, I don't care how much money you are, you're never going to have enough. So I think this idea of wealth, it is important, but it needs to be contextualized. How much money do I need? And why do I need so much money? Right? How much value is in the money? Really? Because I'm an imam. You're an imam, Yusuf. Imam Fahim, Imam Naim. Do y'all have enough money in y'all communities to support the da'wah? Question. Do you? That's a rhetorical question because you really don't want me to answer that. You don't want me to answer that, man. Yusuf. Question, you've been around in our communities. Do we have enough money in the da'wa in our in our institutions from your observation? No, for sure. Absolutely not. Now, and I reverse the question. Do we have people that are financially well off and considered high value men and women who do nothing for the da'wa? Sure. So are they living the prophetic model? And if the answer is no, then they're not high value people, even if in the dunya wise, based on their money and their societal status, they are high valued. Islamically, they are low valued individuals, even though they have money, even though they have status. That's just me thinking, talking out loud. Okay. So if we are putting a list together, say ideally someone that has financial success and they are willing able, ready to, to donate their money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've personally seen this. May Allah ta'ala bless. Some of the women of my family have been the most active quietly in the da'wah, building masajid, giving away properties. I've seen it. And, it, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. But I'm just saying in my ideal setting, does, uh, even if a woman said, I don't necessarily want to build, uh, you know, give my money away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as a, as a man of high value, uh, if you're looking for a woman of high value, does that matter? Is this, that's the question. Are we going to put that on the list? Yes or no? Say that again. That went too fast. Does does well. Comments are going off the rack, so I'm yeah. sorry. I get distracted. <laughs> it, 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 it is wealth considered uh, when you're determining a woman of high value. That's the question. Yes or no? No, not to me. Not I necessarily. Think, I think it has... As a man, I don't care how much money a woman has anyway. Okay. Right? As, as a Muslim man, that's not the determination, right? Because of your responsibility as a man. Mm -hmm. And I, we don't want to never make this personal, right? Because we all have our personal feeling. We got to speak in general, right? Right. So in generally, we don't have enough wealth anyway. So I don't never think we should make that a standard to see if someone's high valued. I think what is more reflective is how you use your wealth, whatever you sure. have. 
Sure, right. Sure. So if I only have a certain amount of money, am I using that wisely? And am I educated with finances, how to make the maximum of the money? I was talking to a husband and wife. I just want to share this and let me give them a plug. Husband and wife, here's your discussion, right? <laughs> they were talking and the brother let me talk to his wife. He was there on the phone and she was talking about finances, money. She makes good money. He makes good money. So they were having this conversation and she said, it really don't matter about money because I may make more money or a wife may make more money, but the husband may be better with the money that he has. So he ends up having more money because he manages his money better, right? Sure, sure. So, and it could, go the, it could go the other way. The man could be a high earner, but not a good management and good management of money. And the wife may be better at managing money. So the high value depends on usage, right? How do you use your money? Which is another branching conversation that we need to have. Most of us don't have financial, financial literacy training. So we don't know how to handle money. And because we come, a lot of us, too many of us, especially our crowd, comes from a low economic background and i would say that by what we do with the money we weren't trained how to handle money so therefore even the little bit of money we have we don't use it wisely sure yeah so i think that money whole issue needs to come with financial literacy training showing us how to do all those things and then have that discussion right and I think even people who don't have a lot of money can do a lot of wonderful things if we train them. Okay. And, uh, and let me say this, and I'll, I'll stop. Y'all got me warmed up, right? If we have a lot of money, us, because somebody said we're not poor. Okay, great. We're not poor. Then we're extremely stingy, which is a heart disease that we need to fix. So when I say we don't have a lot of money, I'm giving us the benefit of the doubt. Because if we have a lot of money and our condition is the way it is, that speaks volumes to our inward state, right? So I think it's something we need to think about when we jump out there and say, oh, we're not, we're, we, we're, we're, we're good with money. Ooh. If our institutions look like they do and you got money, we got a bigger problem than your money. We got a way bigger problem than your money. And that's your heart. If your heart is that bad where you have all this excess resources and your communities look the way they look, you got a real problem. And maybe some of us need to start stop putting that money in our high valued suits and our red bottom shoes and put it in building our institutions. That's my rocket. Hey, that's my money she got, man. Two years, $200,000, and I never even touched her. Uh! <laughs> no, nah, I'm just joking, man. Yeah, um, mashallah, man. You know, money money is important, but it's not everything, you know, because, you know, it, it like uh, uh, Sheikh Yusuf was saying, it's more, it is important, like if a woman has it, you know, I mean, for me, if she got it, then we're using it together and vice versa. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, if I got the bread, then I'm I'm Jay-Z with the, you know, I'm bossed up like Jay-Z. If she got the bread, you know, I'm like Stedman Graham. I just play my role. You know, I'm a coach behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. My woman's a billionaire, but she take care of everything. I just, you know, I influence her. Mm -hmm. I might get canceled for that, but that's okay. I'm broke as a joke. So, you <laughs> know what I mean? I show up on another network. <laughs> <laughs> I think this issue as far as money, uh, I came in a little late and uh, I'm just trying to pick up uh, as, as far as the money issue. I think brothers need to understand because the sisters do know and understand that their money is their money. So I would advise any brother who's looking to go into a marriage is to understand that. 
be willing to invest in the family and that your investment will come first. Uh, her investment is simply Sadaka. Now, a woman's money, you know, yes, it could be important. Yeah, it might be a nice feature to her, to her, but you really want to see how long her hand is. You know, now if she's a giving person, then then yes, that's very that's attractive, right? But as as far as money to men, uh Muslim men, that's not really something that that uh makes a woman high value uh to us, in my opinion, to myself, because it's not really a concern. It's not really a concern. So she could work in corporate or she could work at Walmart or Checkers or uh, Wawa. It's not really a concern, but her dean and how she practiced, that's more of a concern for me. So as Muslims, we're in between this balance between dean and dunya when we're talking about our mates, when we're talking about our respective wives, right? And likewise for the women, they're between dean and dunya when they're looking at the brothers, right? And any sister that says, no, they're not, they're, they, they're, not, they're just capping. They're not really telling the truth. They're between the dean and the dunya. They want him to have some dean to him, but at the same time, can he raise a family? Can he take care of me? Do I am I is this going to be 50-50 or am I going to be able to sit back and and just be the woman of the house, right? Rest in my femininity and let him lead. Right? Because sisters really want the man to lead and there not be no conflict. And so uh this issue about money, it is definitely an issue that we need to talk about. And sisters need to be able to hear the brothers, not just in the barbershop, but right here on this platform. And we need to be able to take one topic at a time to unpack this thing. I, I think tonight's show uh, shows, it looks like we have over 100 people. Tonight's show shows we, there is interest. There is interest. And, and I'm glad there is because in our communities, we have a lot of concepts of Muslims who have converted to Islam or even born Muslims that have a lot of concepts and ideas and ideals that are in their head that has never been challenged. So as much pushback that Kevin and others like him have, have gone uh, about feminism and, and the uh, uh, genocracy and all of that, well, we need to have talk conversations about it. Now, on regular, regular media, uh, whether it's the Zoom, the Chew, oh, many conversations have been talked about the issues with the men. And we have talked about the issues with Muslim brothers here and in the barbershops. So now it's time, now is now it's time to have that conversation both sides together. Sayyidi Sheikh Yusuf, let me ask you a question. And, and we'll answer both. As you studied overseas in Egypt with great scholars, what is Islamically from your studies and your studies basically in the Maliki school is Islamically from the legal side of it, what is a high valued woman? What should we look for? Based upon the Sharia, based upon Maliki fit? Yes, that's we're following Islam. <laughs> that's a that's a very pointed question. Um, I I don't think there is no distinction between a madahib when it comes to what a high value spouse is. I spit it out, well, then. Um, and bear with me. If if I was, and I may have to, they call the adhan, so I may have to get back to you, inshallah, to finish it. Okay, hold uh, it and think about the question. Yeah, Go I, ahead. I'll hold that, come back. Whatever you can have in the medium, if you want to say something before you leave, but hold that yeah. question, because it's important. Yeah, yeah. What, what I can say is that if I was following the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu I would disagree with my elders and say that um wealth does matter not just money not material li liquid wealth i'm talking about land i'm talking about property i'm talking about financial management that mm -hmm. stuff is important the, our, our brother said that you know if a sister works at wawa and has good taqwa she's good for me i, I can't i can't i can't rock with that you know um mm -hmm. re respectfully uh, i think mm -hmm. that we should have a higher standard for ourselves as men and also for our spouses you know for brother is the ceo of a company you know, you should also be looking for someone that 
has the skills, if you know, whatever the case may be. So I, I do believe that wealth has value. The second thing that Prophet Sallam said is Jamal, is, is beauty. And I think that's a whole nother conversation that we could talk about. But I think physical beauty has merit. I think we've been taught, oh, just have taqwa if a person has a good deen, it doesn't matter what they look like. But that's not that's not what I found in the prophetic tradition. I found that you should look and be pleased with the person uh, that you're looking at. There should be some sort of attraction and uh, to, w- to w- the person that you're looking at, I think that has value. Hasab wa nasab, we're talking about lineage. And I think our community's lineage doesn't matter as much. So we're talking about uh, social rel- uh, social status. A person has a high social status. I think that has value. Now, how do we determine social status? We're not talking about keeping up with the Kardashians, but a person, a family has a name. And we're talking about, oh, Imam Muhammad's family. I would love to marry from Imam Muhammad's family because his character, who they are, what they stand for, what they represent, I think that has merit. And then lastly, a uh, dean. What does dean look like? Not that person that just, you know, uh, quotes books or memorizes things and says this is a person's dean, but how a person practices their dean, how they implement it, how a person, uh, how they embody the Quran, how they embody the prophetic tradition. That's what I said when we're talking about dean. Uh, so I would, in following the hadith, I would say that matters. If you add to that uh, a person's education as well, I think that all goes to what a high value woman is. Wallahu mm-hmm. ta'ala mm-hmm. right, We're going to take a break while everyone prays and we got to do the fundraising, Farouk. Are you good at that? No. You look like Dr. York, so you probably should get to- <laughs> Never, never, never. <laughs> He was good at raising money. Get busy. <laughs> we need quota. I right? come on. I need your help. Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so I want to ask I you think, a question. Why should people financially support the Black Imam Roundtable? Why? Uh, because your topics will be covered here. Your voice will be heard here. You can come in the comments, make your comment, make your request. Or you can see us in person. I mean, many of the people that are part of this 3453 three family have seen me in person or have seen uh, the, uh, any one of the imams in person. And we're real people, real people, real people trying to get real things done and trying to do it for myself and trying to do it for the family. And so that we can continue this tradition and pass it down to our children so we can break some of these cycles that have us ha- having this conversation tonight, you know. Because I, I don't like asking the question to to brothers and sisters and how they're doing and what the prospects of marriage is looking like. And, and many times I have to hear their response. I hear from the sisters what they're saying. A lot of brothers are not doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, we can't count on the brothers. And then the brothers saying, well, there ain't no good sisters out here. You know, they playing around. Uh, they want to be modern women, but they want us to be traditional men or or things like that, you know, so that that's why the funding is necessary. This ain't free. This is this is you know, we need your support in order to for these books, for these classes, and everything that we do. You know, some and, someone got to pay for this meat for the grill for the cookout. So I, oh, thinking about cookout. Hey, you're right. It ain't free. So we mm-hmm. need. We're going to have a page specifically for donating. Because your stuff is on the chopping block, Farouk. We had a <laughs> meeting. <stuff. laughs> yeah, it costs too much. they like, hey, hey, we're not spending all this money, right? So in order that we could do everything, we're going to make a page so that people mm-hmm. can donate. We don't want to charge so people mm. can donate so we could do it big, right? Okay. And not put the whole burden on the masjid. Because right. we do, like, I can, I can pull some strings, but I get a lot of flack when I do it. Right, mm-hmm. you think we rich and you just spend money for your people <laughs> because a lot of y'all come from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna try to do it a different way this time. It's still gonna be free, but we're gonna encourage everyone to donate as much as you can so we could do it big, real big. Yes, right? let's do it big. Let's do it big. So let's, we can cook all that least... fancy stuff you like to. We can get three grills or four grills. And you can mm-hmm. be whatever the heck you want. I think it's <laughs> worth it personally, but mm-hmm. it costs money, like you said, it's not free. Yeah, yeah. 
let's do that. Brothers and sisters out there, let's donate so that we can do it better than we did last summer, right? There, there will be no disappointments for those that travel in from out of town and what they see in the reception and the family as we as we take over the city, as we take over the boardwalk, right? And and I'm I'm looking forward to see everyone, right? And I, and I hope these expenses make it possible for me to to see everyone. So every donation to the Black Man's uh, Black Imams Roundtable will go towards that effort, towards that effort. But I, I will I, I'll be honest with you though, this topic tonight is a is a topic that is. Uh, uh, I won't say very close to me, but it's, it's something that is uh, very important to me because I have kids, I have daughters, I have sons, and I'm looking at their prospects as well. And I'm wanting the best for them. And I know what they're looking at to get to to uh, to uh, marry, right? What they like, but I also have what I like for them. And we don't see in the middle. We don't see in the middle, right? I think I was on Imam Naeem and... and What I miss you, man. He got cheap internet. Yeah, I didn't miss that. What what, what I miss? Oh, uh, he was talking, but it's 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 thing froze. Oh no! So it, we were just talking about the fundraising aspect and how Farouk decided we're gonna use the money from the Black Imams Roundtable for the barbecue. Okay. You hear that, Imam name? I heard that. Farouk just deciding what we gonna do. Uh, that's why he froze. You, you, you see, remember Eddie Murphy said, "Give a Negro a rope, he want to be a cowboy." <laughs> <laughs> Put him on the Black Imam Round Table, and he's starting to delegate where the funds go. <laughs> he want to be the Mufti. Um, so we talked about high value woman and high value man, Islamically. Y'all want to tackle that? Because you, uh, Sayyid Yusuf, had to go pray. We're going to have to come back on these subjects off Kevin Samuels and on the subjects. So maybe next week we got to continue. I think one thing we need to be careful of, though, and I see it in like, like going back to what you mentioned and what you had everybody type in earlier, what affects the black community affects the black Muslim community. And one thing that I've seen over and over again is people said, rightfully so, that he talked to women like trash. He talked to women bad. He came off hard. It's unacceptable. That triggers a lot of people. But he also talked bad to men. He talked to them like trash. He talked to them directly like trash for much longer than he has been talking to women like trash. In fact, I sent Imam Amin a clip. Oh, I sent to both of y'all. <laughs> we can't, it's, he talked to this dude so bad that we couldn't even play it. We can't even play it. He asked the dude how, 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 how tall he was, how much he weighed. <laughs> and he started off by calling him a fat effer. Right? <laughs> I can't even repeat everything else he said, right? But he talking to men like that. Why? So why am I mentioning this? In the black community, it's acceptable, and it's not. It doesn't trigger anybody for black men to be trashed and talk too bad by anybody. Black women, other black men, nobody. But black women, that's unacceptable. You better not talk to black women like that. And you see the same thing happen in the Muslim community. You could talk about Muslim men any way you want to, black Muslim men, but you bet not talk about the black Muslim women like that. That's no, that's no, that's not Islamic. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kulu Muslim ala Muslim haram, damu huwa malu huwa irdu." Everything from one Muslim to another Muslim is sacred. His blood, his property, and his honor. Right. So if a Muslim woman's blood, property, and honor is sacred. It's just the same thing with the Muslim man. But you find in our community, we we get in it, we get in this stuff from from outsiders. That's why we got to be careful about who influences us, right? 
we'll just ignore the fact that black Muslim men be getting dragged publicly, disrespected publicly, humiliated publicly. It's okay. But it's not okay to do it to a black Muslim woman. And it's not okay to do it to a black Muslim woman. But even amongst Muslims, it's acceptable to dishonor a Muslim man, but not a Muslim woman. Talking about in the black community. So we have to be careful. Like we, we people are triggered by it. Like, no, he talked about women like trash. No, he talked about men like trash too. Why is one acceptable and the other and the other one is not? And so I think we need to watch out for this. That's one thing I I keep saying. He you know he talked about you know black women bad. No, he was an equal opportunity embarrasser. He embarrassed everybody. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, one thing, and, and to me, this is what stood out the most to me, is that so many people feel comfortable talking about stuff that they have no knowledge of. For example, I seen one person who calls himself an imam. And he had this long post. And he says, I never heard of Kevin Samuels till today. And he said, I don't know anything about him. Never saw one video. But based upon everything I'm hearing, and then he went on to, 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 to drag Kevin Samuels. Like, so that's what imams are doing now? You know, there is a, an ayat of Quran that basically says, oh, you who believe, if someone comes to you with some news, a facet comes to you with some news, verify it. You know, unless you harm people out of ignorance and become regretful for what you have done, right? That is a, like a principle in Islam that we should, you know, at least acknowledge that it exists. And we just don't, you know, we don't make statements and speeches and form opinions about anything until the information is verified. And I think that's another thing that we, we have a bad, we have a problem with. We feel like we have to have an opinion on everything. If you don't know something about the subject or a person or what's going on, nobody, nobody put a gun in your head and said, talk or have an opinion on it. Just say, I don't know. I never heard of the dude before. Or I haven't seen enough to even form, form an opinion about it. But on top of that, also, a, a lot of people maybe agree with something. No Muslim is going to agree with everything he said. But a lot of Muslim men are punked into expressing vitriol against him because the overwhelming amount of women that have done so. I think that's dangerous. And if you don't, if you've never been the victim of slander, People don't like you. People don't hate you because of because people hate you because of what someone else said about you, right? You can't. You probably can't relate to it. See what people have done with Kevin Samuel, Samuels is what the media and politicians have done to people that they hate. First, they take you and they demonize you, right? And then they say. This person is equivalent to, for that. So now Kevin Samuel, Kevin Samuels equals misogynist. He's against women. And so if you now, hey, you come, you might not even know who Kevin Samuels is. And you express something that black women don't like. Oh, you like Kevin Samuels. And then people hate you because you like Kevin Samuels. And they don't know who Kevin Samuels is. And you don't know who Kevin Samuels is. Right. So so I think we need to watch out for that. And Muslims, again, because of that, I we shouldn't be falling into that type of stuff. And one more thing I just wanted to mention. Uh, a lot of people don't know. I got to I follow a couple of uh, at least at least two other YouTubers that were in the same space with Kevin Sammy. And. I heard one of them who knew him personally say that because if you are on this YouTube and social media stuff, you get what's called analytics. You know who's following you. You know who's subscribed to you. You know, they got demographics. You know, 
age, country, all that stuff, gender, all that. Most of his followers were women. I heard that other YouTubers say that most of his followers were women. So I think it's also, you know, what a lot of public figures experience, whereas the minority is loud and the majority is silent. Like your haters are loud. They make their hate for you known. But your supporters, because of the loud minority pretending to be the majority, majority they support you on the under quiet. So I'm doing that. And when someone is triggered, they're not going to hear what you're going to say, right? So I, I already know that. If, if you're not coming out the gate damning Kevin Samuels and, and talking trash about them, the people that's triggered, they don't hear nothing you're going to say. You sound like Charlie Brown. You know when the adults talk on Charlie Brown, that old cartoon that some of y'all are too young uh, to know about? Anytime adults will come on, they wouldn't actually be speaking. All you would hear is... So if someone is triggered, right, once they automatically put you on the wrong side, they don't hear you speaking. They just hear, ah, 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 ah. that's what they hear. He's going to say something bad about me? Yeah. After Imam Fahim, I'm getting ready to trigger some people. I can't resist. Yes. You know what Kevin yeah, Samuels uh, used to do that I agree with? What's that? He controlled his platform. He ain't let nobody come and just kick off their stuff. He gonna give it to you. So I'm getting ready to fire back, right? I tried to hold it, but they keep pushing me. I'm gonna fire back. Yeah, I, I, I when I think about Kevin Samuels, hold on, my automatic light went off. Uh oh, need money for electric bill. <laughs> no, Issa, Issa, Issa put this automated uh, sensor in my joint, man. But I was thinking about this uh, psychologist name was Carl Jung. You ever heard of him? Yeah, he said a very important statement, uh, and I think it relates to uh, Kevin Samuels. He said that everything that irritates us about somebody else leads us to an understanding about ourselves. And I think that should be the approach that we have with Kevin Samuels. Like, he said a lot of things that rub people the, long, the wrong way and irritate a lot of people. It triggered a lot of people. But a lot of the thing that he said, we should be internalizing it, you know, men and women, you know, because he really appealed to both genders, you know, and, you know, he, he may have uh, triggered women more than men or offended women more than men. But when we look at these things as, uh, outside of what has irritated us, look at the reality of some of these things that he's talking about, you know, what I mean, how, you know, it is a reality that we find in people who are not compatible for marriage, that we, you know, we're undervaluing and overvaluing ourselves in some instances. We're placing values in things that, you know, we, we, we're we overemphasizing those things and that's not what we're looking for. And while we're having problems with marriages in our Islamic communities, you know, we're exaggerating our affairs sometimes. We're over-exaggerating. We're, we're doing a lot of things that, you know, he, he hit on a lot of points that we just really need to pay attention to and just look to our own dean and, you know, take what we get from them or what we heard from them, even the stuff that bothers us, you know? I mean, personally, it bothered me that he talked to women like that, that he insulted women like that, you know? But for those kind of women that, you know, they still will call into the show and listen to him. Those kind of women need to take heed, okay? Now, 10 years down the line, you still haven't found a suitable mate, but you told yourself that you're this, you know, this, this you know, uh, on the scale of one to 10, you are 20. And then you're not even finding a 10. Like you have to start taking a look at things. You know what I mean? A, a brothers and sisters getting married. Marriage is not working out. You know, something is wrong with the spouse, this, that, and the other. Maybe it's not always the other person. You know what I mean? Maybe it's something that, that leads us to an understanding about ourselves, uh, why we can't find somebody that's suitable for us, that's compatible for us, or has the same value more or more or less. You know, I mean, just really just have to start looking at those things, you know, inshallah. Uh, Yusuf was, um, uh, had, Imam, I got to call you Imam. I, I'm, I'm plugging for you. I think you would be a great addition to be a, uh, what, what's, what's those commentators? You know how you get the special commentators that come on the show once in a while, even if it ain't regularly, what they call it? Uh, 
uh, uh, analyst, uh, yeah. seasonal, he's a seasonal analyst. Yeah. I think you bring a good perspective to the Black Imams Roundtable. And I think, especially because of your age, right? And your experience, you know, uh, I think I think that's valuable. And I think we need to hear from our youth who got some sense, right? Uh, and when I say youth, I mean younger than us, right? Uh, I think that's valuable, right? We don't have all the answers. So I definitely would like to hear from you more and have you present more, you know, really, you know, to bring another perspective to our discourse, right? All right, go ahead, Sayyidi, because you had some points you needed to make. Uh, I, I think, Bismillah rahman Barakallah Fika, thank you for uh, your honoring me and inviting me as always. Um, I think that if we can leave here tonight, because many people I think are wondering what is the benefit of this conversation, how is it beneficial? I think if we can leave here today with a, with a you know, sort of a, a sort of idea of what does a high value man look like and what does a high value woman look like? And as a way to do muhasaba, like a self-evaluation of ourselves, and then how do we put that 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 metric, right? If I'm saying I'm a high, I'm a high value brother, right? And you know, and this is like looking like, no, brother, you're not. Or I'm a high value sister, and the people around you are looking like you're really not, but nobody wants to tell you the truth. If we can have an idea of what does that look like, I think it would be highly beneficial. So um, yeah, I put some ideas out there earlier before saw that, but if we could just have a sort of consensus of what are some general characteristics that we would look for in a high value woman that we can determine a high value man, I think that would be very beneficial. For me, honestly, my first priority, and speaking for me, Islamically, okay. is where are you at in terms of a da'wah? For me, a da'wah. that's because at the ultimate, especially as a black man, right? I personally believe the only salvation for our people and the whole world, but especially us, is Islam. Mm. That's my firm belief, right? Okay. And so we if say that's, it's, it's not. Right. If that's not your priority and spreading the deen in all of its aspects, your value has dropped to the basement with me. I'm talking about me personally. Right? That is the okay. scale by which I weigh human beings, men or women. What okay. is your involvement? and spreading this dean. And it, it has various aspects. It's not all a teacher, right? But what is your commitment to making the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala high? To me, man, I wish I could be honest sometimes, but it hurts when you're honest. And as that, what's his name, Jack Nicholson? That's his name? You know, a few good men. Y'all know the guy, right? You know Kevin Sainz, but not Jack Nicholson? Or Jack Nichols, which is it? Nicholson or Nichols? Nicholson. Nicholson. You can't handle the truth. Remember that line? Everybody knows that line. <laughs> Tom Cruise and him. Yeah, yeah, in the court. Many of us can't handle the truth. You know what I do when I watch marriages go to wreck? I watch the individual after the marriage. When I see marriages fall apart, I watch the individual's religion after the marriage, mm. right? I look at that closely. You were married to Fulan, and this is what you're doing. You're not married to Fulan or Fulana. Now, this is what you're doing. That's a telltale sign to me, right? Okay. You were first man of the dean when you were married to such and such a sister. Now that marriage didn't work out, your dean went crashing down, right? You were married to such and such a brother and you was in it. Now we can't find you, right? Okay. For me, that's a telltale sign of you as an individual, right? 
And I've been an imam for years, so I've been watching this trend for years, right? That your deen is contingent upon certain external things that have nothing to do with the deen itself, right? Mm -hmm. My spouse, my, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I think that's it. And I think we need to return to that. You don't have to be Shaykh al-Islam. You just have to be a good Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example and I'll stop because it could go on, but I just want to give you an example. The Sahaba explained, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they explained uh, they explained the situation of the time of the Prophet. And you know what they said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They said, we lived, we saw a time that the only one who would leave the congregational prayer was a well-known hypocrite. Listen to that. That's the Sahaba. They said, we lived in the time where the only one who would leave out the congregational prayer would be a well-known hypocrite. Describe our time now, which we see among people. Huh? Think about that. How many people don't go nowhere near the masjid except on Jumu'ah? And we that's high valued? Absolutely not. And I'm talking about men because women are not obligated to go to the masjid. But we're talking about men. How are you high valued and you never go pray? So a person like you, are you going to raise a Muslim family that's going to benefit the community and the society? Really? You don't even go to the masjid and pray. Right? You're cool with that. And your wife is cool with it, which makes her not so much a high-value woman. You know what my sheikhs used to say? If you see a woman who lets her husband stay home and not go to the masjid, no, she's destroying her own family. How much common is that? That the woman won't say anything while the husband lags behind. How Amen. is that valued? I, I want to know how is that a high value individual? When the first thing we're going to be questioned about on the day of judgment is the salah. And the salah in the time of the Sahaba wasn't considered salah if it was outside the masjid. To the extent that the Prophet wasallam said, I wish to leave someone to lead the prayer. I go burn the houses down for those who don't come pray. How are you a valued man, woman, or anything, and you don't value the prayer? Mm. Mm. Think about this stuff. Yeah. But we'll consider such a person as a high-valued individual, a spouse. And we'll say, you should marry him. You don't even come to the masjid. How should you marry him? Think mm. about that. Think how low we've come and what our value system is. Imam, I mean, I, I think before we 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 overvalue the high value term, I think I think we need to understand that most of us are average. Most of the Muslims in, in the community, we are average. This term average high, at best. Huh? Average at best. It, I, average at best. And and I will even go far as to say is that the brothers we don't have a problem admitting that. Now some of now there are some brothers that uh, that overvalue themselves, and I believe that there are many more sisters that do the same thing. And we need to talk about it. But most of us are average. Are average. Now we strive to be high value, and what that means is subjective. It's subjective. It, what it means here in the states, and what it means in Turin or what it means in Medina, or, or what it means in Andalus, right? So what high value means is subjective. New Jersey, Atlanta, two different things. But the one thing that we can agree upon is that most of us are average. Most of us are average. 
So, but why can we even at average at best, what is the problem in our communities? Why we can't get married? Why we can't get along without the ring? Why we can't, why we can't, you know, work together without after the marriage? Say, like if the marriage does go awry, right? Or it, it runs its course and we're no longer together. Why now, right? There's a problem in raising the children. We were on the same page when we were uh, married. Why now? W why can't we work together? So I think uh, this conversation needs to continue, but we need we we need it to be structured. We need to uh, and allow some of the sisters to come on, right? So we can have this conversation, not about Kevin Samuels, because this Kevin didn't start anything, right? He didn't start this conversation, but we'll finish it. We'll finish it. So what, what, I, what I'm trying to do, inshallah ta'ala, what I'd like us to do is to at least articulate, you know, what are, as Muslim men, what, what do, where do we place our values? Uh, Imam mm -hmm. Amin said, clearly said Islam, and what I understood was da'wah, but I know the prerequisites for da'wah is first knowledge, and then practice, implementation, and then da'wah. So that's how he defines al-Islam. So when a person says, I want someone with a good deen, he means a person that has a, a sound understanding of the re of religion, authentic knowledge, a mm -hmm. sound knowledge a sound practice of the religion with a history of practice and not I, st I practice for three months, I follow for three months, but a track record of practicing and da'wah, a person that calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that correct, Iman? In general, but what, in general, I, would, in general. what I would add to that, mm -hmm. if we want to put all that in perspective, mm -hmm. we have to have a standard of what is a good Muslim. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think that standard is missing among us. Okay. Right, what is the standard for a good Muslim? Of a, just a good, and a good Muslim is average, you know, not pious. A good mm -hmm. Muslim is average, right? It's average, a good Muslim. The mm -hmm. one who is pious is an exceedingly good Muslim. Mm -hmm. Like certain things as a Muslim, you must do to be an average, everyday good Muslim. I think we need to define that Okay. Uh, you, did you break up your man? Yeah, I think he's frozen. Uh, okay. Really, really, really? No, that's that's all my point is. So I think we should like just have a standard among us. And I think that's in all of our matters. What is our standard as black Muslims? Because sure. it's easy to say we follow Quran and Sunnah. We're not up at that standard. That's a way a higher standard than we believe, right? And, and, and any of us who've traveled and studied abroad and been in real societies where piety is important, you know we're not there, right? We're not at that level, but we should have a standard that's a baseline for all of us. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just, just if we can put a skeleton together first and then we go into death of what it means, the first uh, standard is Islam. I think we all are and unanimously can agree upon that. What comes after that? A person has good deen in whatever way we qualify good deen. What's next? Lineage. Lineage. Yeah, what does that look like? What does that look like? And in, in our community, in our situation. In in our community, uh lineage in a prospective mate, male or female, is whether or not you have that support of other Muslims in that family. All right. So a and Muslim family. If you have it, if you have it. Now, many of us, uh, uh, our mates, uh, husbands or wives, right? Our mates, their family isn't Muslim. So we don't have that support. But if he or she does have it, you can see that at that being something appealing, but not necessarily a prerequisite. That's because that sounds complicated to me. OK. All right. <laughs> That's right. a question. <laughs> it sounds complicated. What, mm -hmm. what I want to, because can, can I can I ask question about family? Mm -hmm. Just a quick about question. Mm -hmm. And I totally disagree with all this non-Muslim talk. I don't agree at okay. all. That's okay. a major mistake we make. Mm -hmm. I think, especially in the marriage process, mm -hmm. because a lot of us don't have Muslim families, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And and some of us come from good families. They are just mm -hmm. not Muslim. But they are good okay. families. Mm -hmm. And then some of us come mm -hmm. from broken families. Mm -hmm. 
And that will play a role in our character. All of us, Mm -hmm. we are affected, right? Mm -hmm. So some of us grew up in homes where we saw a lot of abuse, whether physical, uh, uh, verbal. You not knowing that when you marry such a person may expose you to that. Had you been concerned about their family, you would have known they grew up in an abusive home, which has an effect on their personality. Or they lived with strong-willed men, right? So therefore, those men who are strong-willed men had an effect on the young boys who were coming up in that. Maybe there were a bunch of women who were reckless and had no respect for their spouses. So they saw their women folk curse the men or belittle the men or emasculate the men. So that's why they do it. So, and that came say, come from a non-Muslim environment. If you would have known that, you would have known what you're getting into. And when it raised its head, you know how to deal with it, right? We never go into saying, let me talk to your mother or they Kaffir. But they love their Kaffir mom and dad. And their Kaffir mom and dad know them better than you. Right? Because when they go to you, they have on their pious mask. When they're with their Kaffir family, they are so-and-so. That's important to know. So I don't agree that... Well, I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not pitting uh, Muslim family versus non-Muslim family. What I'm saying is the value of the family. Yeah, that's which what I'm saying. I'm not talking about problem. you. I'm talking about okay. in general. So we dismiss okay. the whole thing of family. And family is very important because it's from the family that the individual is shaped. Okay. Whether from a Muslim or non-Muslim family. Okay. Right? So morals are instilled in people from their families from their upbringing, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so we I'm have saying, Islam, I think family Islam. is important, whether it's Muslim okay. or non-Muslim, because family, family good, is where you want to get morality. Okay. All right. What's next, Imams? We have Islam, a solid, wholesome family, Muslim or non-Muslim, just good people, come from good stock, as they say. What, what's, what's, what's another? aspect or component i know you're trying to generalize you're trying trying to just build a skeleton yeah but uh going back to the islam like imam i mean he mentioned dawah i was Mm going to say dawah as well but i was going to put another slant to it Mm -hmm. especially for our uh our condition our our situation Mm -hmm. being an active muslim another way to put it being part of jamaah being part of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah, not just intellectually or as far as learning, but being an active Muslim. Because in this society, you know, anyone who's been around a long, uh, a while knows that being an active Muslim, it's hard passing Islam to your children as an active Muslim, mother and father. What about the Muslim who is just passive? Is not active. They just pray five times a day, if that, at home. They, you know, they, they, they're they not engaged with the Muslim community in, really in no shape, form, or fashion. You know, how does Islam get passed to the children then? And there's a, I don't want to open up cans of worm, but there's a whole lot of other stuff behind that as well. Like, uh, legally, technically, what is the hookum of the person who lives in a place like this and is just here passively? as a Muslim, you know, what, what category do they fall in? So I'm, I'm saying that I'm trying to keep it like in simple language, but I'm saying mm-hmm. all of that with this in, like in the background. So like, so, you know, if we're using this term high value, someone that is not an active Muslim, someone that is just passive, someone that is Muslim, the same way a lot of us were Christian before we took Islam, before we took Shahada, mm-hmm. meaning, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't go to church all the time. We weren't Bible thumping people. We didn't even know the Bible. We're just Christian because, you know, mm-hmm. we, our parents said I was Christian. A lot of people uh, are Muslim the same way, just like that. And okay. that 
for me is unacceptable in this environment. Mm -hmm. That may that may work in a Muslim environment where ninety five percent of the people are Muslim, you know that kind of stuff. But you're not passing Islam to your children, in, you know, with it with a dean like that here in this society. You can barely okay. pass it on with being staunch, active Muslims, both parents home together in this society. So what about a, a, a passive Muslim that is just, you know, just no, nominally Muslim? So in my mind, in my opinion, this is just personal, that that person who is not active will, will not be considered a quote unquote high value Muslim. Okay. Okay, we got that. So that's under the whole comprehensive statement of Islam. Uh, and, and of course, we can have a whole discussion about that, but just trying to build the skeleton, uh, Islam, Deen, Dawa, all of that, and family, a good wholesome family. What's after that? What are some what are some other high value traits? Maybe let's hear from the crowd, uh, from the audience too. Maybe they can put some of those points and they may have some better ideas than us. So let them check out the comments as well. Go ahead. I mean, I mean, for like, if, I'm sure many of you have sons, as I know for sure. If a sister is interested in your son, uh, what, what are some qualities that you say, okay, this is a good sister right here that I would like to have my son marry? Okay, she has a good dean. She has a knowledge of the dean, a good practice. She's an active Muslim. She's down for the dawah. She has a good family. And whatever our approximation of a family is, what are some other qualities? Well, you see, I, this is where I think- I got two boys. Mm -hmm. And that's a serious question. Mm -hmm. And I got two, and so does Imam Naeem, young boys, right? Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, I was talking about that. And I had this thought about my boys, right? I said, listen, the standard for them is much higher than it was for my elder children. Okay. Right? Is the not the same standard? Even the thought of what needs to be a spouse for my boys, that bar is real high, right? So what is it? Can you can you articulate I'll that? I'll give you number one. Number one is is always the religious involvement. Okay, I can, got my sons cannot be married to someone who's not active in the teaching, spreading, and practicing of Islam. Of course, we don't even gotta say according to the scale of Ali Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, that's a given, everyone knows that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's one. So your religiosity is a very important point. Secondly, mm -hmm. on top of that, the religiosity of your parents. Okay. Family, I'm not just again. looking at the kid. I'm looking at your parents, too. Okay. Right? Then, the wife for my children must be an extremely obedient and submissive wife for what the work my children have to do, the boys. Okay, so hold on. Pause on that real quick. Uh, I, I was explicit I with the words. Yeah, obedient yeah. Obedient and, and submissive. submissive. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's mm -hmm. get into it. What does that mean? What does that look like? Obedient. When the conversation goes off the rails. Obedient, uh, well, <laughs> obedient is my husband is the authority after Allah and his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm -hmm. No, he froze. Okay. I'm I'm back. Submissive, I surrender to that. Okay. The wife of my husband, of my children, must see them as kings. Mm -hmm. The Prophet mm -hmm. indicated that. <laughs> when Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal came back from Sham areas and he prostrated to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet said to him, don't do that. If I was to order anyone to prostrate to another, I would order the wife to prostrate to her husband. 
Mm-hmm. That's submission. Right? So, therefore, if you have a wife, and I'm talking about my children, I have two boys. What do I want for my boys? They must be leaders in the communities. My boys will succeed me, inshallah. I know what it takes to do the job that I'm expecting of them. If they have a wife who is not obedient and does not be submissive and surrender to their authority, it's going to be almost impossible to do the work. Okay. Right? So that's all an important thing. For me, as an individual, we're starting a process. For them, they have to finish it, right? So the, the errors we have in our relationships, we can't allow them to have, if you understand what I mean. Okay, right? sure. So what's good for me is not good for them. Mm. So in their education, how are you educating your children? I'm not talking about Islamically. I'm talking about worldly. Mm-hmm. Are you teaching your children about community building, nation building? Because my boys will be nation builders, inshallah ta'ala. If your daughter is not like that, that's not a match. Mm-hmm. Right? So what are you teaching them about building the black community? What are you teaching them about being engaged in the importance of community, right? Do you have a healthy love for our people? Are your children, do they have a healthy love for our people? Because if I'm going to have these boys marry your daughter, that all got to be in place. And, And I could go on and on. Are you teaching them about infrastructure building? We talked about the financial literacy piece. Hold they on, wait, gotta run the sadge. I want to make sure I don't communities. I want to make sure I don't miss. Mean? Yeah, I don't want to miss you. So, does all of that fall under obedience and submissiveness, or are we talking about some other categories? I just want to write this down. No, there that there are categories that all require obedience and submissiveness. Okay. Right. Okay. So. My son can't have a wife that says, you do that. I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's not going to work. Right? They can't have a wife who, when they say, I got to do this, and the wife said, I'm not doing that. You can't have a wife like that. It's not going to work. You can't have your energy distracted by a wife who's not on the same mission as you. Right? That's going to distract your energy. And it's going to hurt the community. You can't go home and fight with your wife while you're in the streets fighting with the people. So the wife has to have this type of, my husband's the king. Now, likewise, which some women will say, well, you got to be the king yourself. I know that's why we're teaching the boys what they got to do. You can't be like me. You got to be better. The bar for you is not like the bar for me. You have to be better. So just like you got to be a king, you got to provide and take care of your wife like she's the queen. That's your job. So it goes both ways, right? But we're talking about the potential spouse, yeah. right? That's, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And, and unfortunately, in our community, women have been taught to be rebellious. They've listened to too much Beyonce. All my single independent ladies, which is destructive to a community, such a mentality. And men have not taught to build and be responsible. I know that as a leader, we got a lot of men around here who, in my opinion, chumps at best. That's my opinion. And they say, oh, Imam, how can you say that? Because I know what we have to do, and I know what it takes, and you ain't cut like that. Simple. I mean, I hate to say it, and I'm quite sure all of those men, Imams, will say the same thing. We have a real talk. A lot of men are not 
ready for community building. Soft as cotton when it comes to real work. But I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I don't see you doing the man work at all. Mm -hmm. Because if it was more men doing men work, these imams wouldn't be burnt out like they're burnt out. They wouldn't work as hard. So our standard of manhood has nothing to do with nation building. And I think, I, I think, I think that's an issue. So if you got my point, I could go on with this because it's a real concern because I have two young black boys who are raised, gonna be raised in a Muslim community and dealing with these issues in the black community. And I gotta be concerned about that. Yeah, ma'am, I mean, this is the problem that I have with uh, some of what you're saying is that you're making the condition in the household sound like it's, uh, some things are conditional. So you have a, a high standard which you have set for your children, for your sons. And I, Charla, I, I hope all that comes to tuition. But for the average brother, for the average sister, right, who meet each other, the, because these are the ones that are marrying and divorcing, marrying and divorcing, moving on to the next, moving on to the next. These are the ones that we're seeing that can practice Islam while they're married, but can't once they get a divorce. Yeah. What it sounds like is, is that you're setting the bar so high for what seems like should be prerequisites, even for the average brother and the average sister in their household. There should be these uh, these standards of, OK, who's the head of the household? Who's leading? Who's directing? Who is the assistant? But you, it, I'm, get, I'm getting these vibes that um, you're saying uh, got to be nation building. Well, all brothers are, are not nation builders. Some of them just lay foundations. Some of them are just support. Some of them just security. I, I agree with you. That's part of nation building, though. That's just mm -hmm. your role in building the nation. Mm -hmm. That's your role building the nation. Everybody's not doing the same thing. When I'm talking about my sons, they're going to be the leaders of the nation. That's a difference. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be, they're not going to be regular brothers. Yeah. They're going to be super brothers. That's my yeah. wish for my children. Right? Oh, okay. When, so when, in, in, you know, when I ask the question, I'm I'm speaking like a woman. Like I'm I'm okay, let's speak of a woman, right? Yeah, in general. Yeah, like in let's general, speak of in yeah. general. In general. I mm -hmm. believe we gotta raise the standard. We have a standard to be a bum Muslim, and that's a bad standard. I'm now I'm using harsh words because that's how detestable the state is that we have. To us, as long as you say La ilaha Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and do nothing, you're a good Muslim. Mm -hmm. And that's not a standard we should accept. Farouk, he's saying we average at best. <laughs> <laughs> no, we below average. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. We, we are an, an, an insult to average. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And, mm -hmm. and the problem is we accept that. There was a sister. She never finished it. She had the best idea I've ever heard. In it was a woman. She was writing a college paper, you know, a thesis or whatever. She said it was, the, it was called, titled, understanding why there is a culture of acceptance of underachievement in the African-American community. Listen to mm -hmm. that title. Mm -hmm. Understanding why there is a culture of acceptance of underachievement in the African-American community. That's serious. Why do we accept failing as a standard? Mm -hmm. Why? And then we say, everybody does that. No, we're failing. That's wrong. That shouldn't be a standard. The standard is that our kids are going to grow up, go off to college, and lose their dean. That's not an acceptable standard. Our standard is that the masjid is a vacant parking lot, and that's acceptable. No. I highly object. 
especially as Muslims, that Allah said, Kuntum Kairu Ummatin Ukrijat Linas. You are the best nation brought forth for mankind, and we are weak, and we accept it, and it becomes a standard. I don't accept. And anyone who knows me, no, I don't accept that. Period. Not even from myself. That's not acceptable. So you understand what I mean? So that, that's what I'm talking about, a standard. What is our standard? It's frozen. All right. Yeah. Yusuf, Yusuf, please forgive me. I get lost in these moments. Right? Yeah. And I'll just say this. There's a standard for us, and I'm going to leave it quick and I'm going to stop, that we're all going to be, for the, till we die, Wahhabism is going to spread in the black community and we're going to do nothing about it. Okay. That becomes a standard that the people of Ahlul Sunnah won't stand up. I'm talking about the African Americans. So now, false doctrine, a understanding of Islam that is not traditional becomes the standard and we just stand by and say nothing. In fact, we just incline to it and surrender and submit to it without fighting, without teaching, without doing the work because we're not responsible enough to do the man work of da'wah. And to me, that's a problem. That's a problem. And I'm on my soapbox and I'll get off. I'm sorry. Okay. So I just, so far I have Islam, I have family, I have obedient and submissive. Uh, is that, are we all is unanimous that that's a, a high a quality of a high value woman? Is that, is that so? Yes. You mean as far as as a man? Well, men also have preferences as far as what they uh, as far what, as far as what pleases their eye, just like men, just like women do. What do you uh, mean, please pleases your eye? As far as that looks good to you. Yeah. No, no. I I I just want to see if we're in agreement on if Imam Amin said obedient and submissive. Is that are we? Are you yeah, we can include that. that. Yeah, I okay, agree with cool. that. Yeah. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to get for. So past mm -hmm. that now. You said uh, Can I ask a question quick? just about I don't that? agree. You, Do the women agree? agree with that? Because we men, every man wants that. Do well, the women don't have to agree. agree I don't yeah, agree. We don't have to agree. Yeah, the women are looking for wives. So yeah, we know. we don't need permission for them to agree because <laughs> no, no, just, just like they have their preferences about. about men, we don't have to agree. I mean, we, we don't ask they don't ask us for permission on uh, as far as their list. Now I just want to know their feeling. I do not okay. agree. I do not accept. I do not understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm more than willing to hear the sisters and what they think is a high value man to them. And yeah, but we haven't they... even finished our list yet. All right, go ahead. Do your list. I was just wondering. <laughs> I'm talking about the <laughs> obedient submissive. That's all the part I was thinking about. Oh, you you know that it's it's going to be a conversation. It, it's once we got past the dean aspect of it, and now we get into the dunya aspect of it, the the actual touching, seeing, putting work in, this is when the problem is going to come in. This is when some of these ideals that we have in our head or expectations, this is when the problem is going to come in. And this this is usually when we conversations break down, but I hope we, they can continue. Yeah, let's just, just try to get through this list. So you said uh, what's pleasing to the eye. So are we talking about beauty, standards of beauty now? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Okay, how, so now how do we as Muslims determine what's beautiful? As Muslim um, men, it's subjective. It's subjective. I mean, I mean, you just want to take an average amongst men, just the average things. Yes, or yeah. I mean, an average amongst this circle right here. We're talking about us. All right. I, I think if, uh, if we if we could be that real. Uh huh. I think uh, uh, I think we can all agree we want something that is pleasing to us. Some uh, a sister, um, uh, a sister that is uh uh, pleasing in conversation, uh, pleasing to the eye, uh, pleasing to the heart. Brother, conversation no, hold, ain't look. Hold up, hold up, up bro. You, you dancing man. around that. He told me, I, no, 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 I ain't no, never no, seen no, the no. other one. What she look like? <laughs> Come on, <nah>. I ain't <laughs> never seen the other one. What she look like, Mister yeah. Color Purple? <laughs> yeah, well, as far as what she looks like, right? I mean, right. we all you have our about. preferences. We all have our preferences, right? So if sure. if she is uh 
I don't know. See, that's that's why I say it's kind of subjective. It depends on where you come from. I hear we know? talking about you. I hear what what, what uh, it okay. is. It, it, it's I'm a, a, is scared. Okay. I'm gonna jump out. Yeah. Go ahead. You want you want silly or you want netty? Which one you want? <laughs> okay. My preference on what a beautiful woman looks like mm -hmm. is what my wife look like. Her, that's my oh, brother. Lower you up. He to the black and me. <laughs> he may have round table. Lower you up. That boy is smooth. Yeah, yeah. yo. <laughs> he just put 10 years on this marriage in one sentence. Boy, I like that. I knew he was a genius. I, I would say this I've learned that beauty ain't everything. What we may yeah. consider beauty. Mm -hmm. For me, Mm -hmm. I would take an average looking woman. She's mm -hmm. not pretty. By wait, but wait, but hey, man, what do we consider average? I think. I mean, all of us know. All right, so, no, 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 no. We have, we have. That's one of the things about the brother what I'm King. Bismillah. All of us, because we 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 black. We're from the inner city. We know the around the way girl, right? And we all have an image of a around the way girl. She's average, right or wrong? Uh, I'm the wrong way, girls, be boy. No, <laughs> no. We say that. They, make, they no. make you dance in the video, man. You see no, how I'm When we no. think of the average around the way girl, we have an image. She's not Beyonce. I, I right? don't know about that. I don't know about no, that. No, no. No, yeah, I don't know the, about that. Them yeah. around the way for legs. I gotta, man. I gotta disagree about? with you. Let me, let me, let me say this. Now I'm gonna go. Because I'm some of y'all guys with this Muslim stuff, y'all kill me, right? <laughs> right. I'm gonna say it. You give me a chance. I was the street dude prior to my Islam. I'm gonna be, be prior when I say to Ali Sunnah and all this knowledge and stuff. I was Negro, right? Uh -huh. And most of us, whoever come from that background, we had more than one woman, right or wrong. This is real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had our girl. And then the girl you messing with, she don't look the same. Am I right so, or wrong? What, what I don't does know that about look that like? Either. I don't know about I, that. I, I don't know around the way for lays, Bob. No, I'm saying the the the, the 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 dudes that's out in the street, you'll see this is and this is our people. The girl that side piece, she's usually a, a side piece and a dime piece. That's what he's looking for. His wife, his girl. <laughs> he don't even he don't even want a woman that look like that. He don't want nobody looking at his wife, his girl, right? This is just real stuff. I mean, like, mm -hmm. come on, man. No, I, I mean, see that. you broke that what, what, down the last week. I, I, I can see that. Luke. Come on, stop it. That's what I mean. We get. You, you see, I think the difference is right for we, men. We, right? we get too much front, and we gotta stop this stuff. If we yeah, have bamboo look. earrings, at least three pair. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, man? I think what it is for men. For men, we're on, content. Stop. We're content with an average of five and above. So if we get a five or six or seven or eight, nine or ten, we're content. Whereas women are a little bit different. See, women have this natural tendency to want the best. So they are looking, they're not looking to settle. So they're looking for the best that they outcome that they can uh, 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 capture. But for men, when it comes to women and beauty, we have a standard when we have, but our standard is more so of a threshold. So five and above. Now, what is ask, a five though? What, what is that? I want to know what does that look like? You mean you need that example in a person, in a woman? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we be real? I mean, yeah. Can are you we, married? What does that like? Are you married? We're, we're yeah. not being real here. Are you married? You, <laughs> brother YouTube, are you married? Why are y'all beating around the bush, man? No, like, no, no. Give are you an married? Example. Hey, 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 Yusuf, I'm saying the same thing. Why are you beating around the bush? Because what I'm saying, brother Yusuf, if you if you're looking for a brother to to raid a sister, then you then you no, that's not which what is I'm kind of difficult. It, it, you know what we would call a five. Listen, you got to be willing to put your own wife out there. No, no you don't. Saying, no, you no, don't. No, no. You don't have to do that. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because that's why I gave you the example. Mm -hmm. When when you talking about just on your knives, mm -hmm. right? Dudes are looking just for looks when they on knives. That's what they're looking for. 
-hmm. When you marry, it ain't about just your nafs. It's about what you're trying to accomplish. So your wife may not look like all that your nafs desire because you see more than that. Even though she may be a beautiful woman, but you didn't marry her for nafs. At least I hope that's not the only reason you married a woman, right? right. So right. you see other. But when you're talking about just your nafs, you may be looking for something totally different. I'm just mm -hmm. talking about when you're giving your beauty scales. Right. But well, I thought we was talking about knives. No, but he's talking about beauty. Yeah. Man, so I thought we were talking about Kevin people. Samuels. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So when you say, you ain't going to say to your wife, sis, you average. No. But so you're not going to say that for her emotions. But if you be mm. honest in your knife mm. scale, she may be average. But you just ain't going to tell her. Your so, knife so what scale. I what, what I'm saying is... Uh, you understand what I mean? We're having yeah. black talk. We're not mm -hmm. just having strictly old pious shake who acts like he don't have no nuffs. <laughs> no, but I'm trying to relate it back to what Sheikh Yusuf asked. I want to make sure that the question he's asking, we're answering what he's looking, we're giving him what he's looking for. The question is in general, where, where what is our standard of beauty? I'll, I'll make it very plain. If, if somebody said in the comments, uh, I think, uh, what they say, slim, slim in the waist, cute in the face, or something like that. If you look at society, what there's a clear standard of what a bad, what a dime is. That's uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm in agreement. That's the light skin sister with the wavy hair, voluptuous body, uh, nice teeth, whatever the case may be. Um, that's what society is pushing now as what a dime is. Okay, so. That's what I'm talking about. What is our standard? Because we all do have a standard. If we pretend that we don't, we do have a standard of what beauty is, what a dime is. So we could throw these numbers out there. But if a person may say, I feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 10, I'm 11, I'm a 20, whatever the case may be, what is that standard? Whatever the standard of beauty is, if we don't have one, fine. But if we can't articulate that, it's all and well. But I think we do, we do need to look at what our standard of beauty is and also where is it coming from. F F Farouk is going to say your average at best. <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to articulate that for myself, even if just ignore yeah. all other men's standard. I yeah. couldn't even explain that to myself because, mm -hmm. like you get, like you just randomly said some things that are kind of like stereotypical in our community. Like for sure, a lot of people sure. favor, you know, light skinned women. You know, right, 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 a lot right. of us do. Like, not me, right? One. Like some, like, like, like some uh, people say it, and it offends a lot of women. Oh, like you know, you beautiful for a dark skinned woman, right? In, yeah, in my so mind, conversation too. Yeah, you know, they, they, you know, they, they, like, light skin doesn't equal beauty. Like, uh, there's some ugly light skinned women. There's some ugly dark skinned women. There's some ugly. It, so, but I'm it, saying, I, I think he agreed. I, I agree with him. I could, I couldn't. Im Give you. Lying. Huh? But here's my question with that, if I can ask you, once mm -hmm. you finish your thought. Like, I couldn't even make a list for you of what standard of beauty is for myself, not even comparing myself with other brothers and what they think. I couldn't even give you that for myself. Uh, like, can I ask you a question? I can. I don't buy that. That's Samira protection mode. He <laughs> <laughs> don't want no smoke. That's a... <laughs> Man, I, I ain't worried about Samira. Though. Ain't nobody scared of Samira. All right, let's keep it real. I'm going to throw some names just on a scale to one to ten. Your own scale, I want you to grade them. Samira, you got to give him a license to be black for a minute. Samira, can we she give him a license? You don't give me no license. Yeah, you do. You better get a license. Right? <laughs> All right. Beyonce, one to ten. Be honest, I think she's overrated. I didn't ask you that. I asked you seven, one to ten. six, something. I don't seven, know. Seven, six. So she's above average, because average being five, right? Five is average. Mm -hmm. okay. She's above average. Okay. Ali Berry. Back in the day or now? Back in the day. Somebody eight. said eight, nine. Somebody said nine. Oh. Uh, Six. Uh, okay. Monique, the comedian. 
Oh, don't do that. No, 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 no. It's that beauty's in the eyes of beholders. I want to know what he's beholding. She's, Monique, not, the, she's the not in the rankings. Right. She's not in the rankings. He said what? she's not in the rankings. <laughs> but, you, but you know something? But that, okay, that's revealing, though. So now. Right, that's talking. when I'm making a point. No, okay, but she, yeah, but her, her energy is something that I would like, the kind of person she I'm is. I'm making a point. Yeah. So the idea the that a man doesn't have a scale of beauty is not true. Mm. We do have a scale. Because when I said Monique, it wasn't even a consideration. Boom. But to someone, she's the most beautiful woman walking. It just ain't the average guy. That doesn't, I'm just talking about our scale. Now, where we get that scale from, I don't know. Right? Media, maybe. Maybe. I think everybody got their own scale. It's just that when we get around each other, we punk each other into thinking like, like to me, when people put Beyonce at the top, I'm like, why? I, like, I have a, I have an argument. We have, I have this discussion with my own family. You know that, right? We'd be talking about these things, right? To me, let me ask you, Robin Givens. Why, you know, on I a just plane, asked the question. You know, on the, the it's question. funny, because on the plane, on the way back, I was watching Boomerang. You mentioned, you, you mentioned Holly Berry. Now you mentioned Robin Givens. Okay, Robin Givens, question. She's uh, not that pretty, man, but she had I a- I didn't ask that, scale one to 10. Man, a uh, seven. Five. 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 Yusuf, Robin I Givens. I put Holly Berry at eight, remember? All right, Robin Givens, right? I don't even know who Robin Givens is. No, <laughs> <laughs> listen. Who, uh, who messed Mike Tyson up? Here's the point. Um, now for us, right for us right we all have scales to me i think she's a very attractive woman i give Ooh, her robin eight to ten scale to me i give her eight Ooh, to robin ten Gibbons? Scale. yes mm. i think she's way prettier than holly berry that's my scale but we do have a scale do you understand i think she point? had it I think she had a more feminine energy than Holly Berry. Like she had like and a seductiveness about it, her, but she, she wasn't was prettier. Person. She wasn't prettier. So, so what I, but see, now we're getting scales. But let's go back. Wanda the comedian. You know that lady? Yeah. Wanda, what's her name? Sykes. Wanda Sykes. Where's she on the scale? She's not. I'm not sure what she looked like. <laughs> So, so we, all my point is that we have a scale. That's okay. it. Now I'm saying that that my scale ain't locked into certain key features that a lot of us claim to like. Like I agree, but we do have a scale. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, of course. That's my only point. It has nothing to do with right. If if we and women have that scale. Ask any of us, are we handsome looking dudes? To us. <laughs> They'll say we average at best. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They look at them celebrity dudes and be all googly eyed and look at us like, damn, what happened? What happened to you? <laughs> they be married talking about that's my husband on the screen. Right. Somebody so just said in the so comments not too long ago. They so, you see, you see that, man? Man? so my point <laughs> is everybody has a scale. That's what you're saying, right, Yusuf? Yeah, that's what I'm scale? saying. Stop acting like you don't got a scale. You do, right? To me, I'm a good looking dude. That don't mean that to the next person, right? That's, but I can look at my numbers. Oh, now that's gotta be a joke. And I can look at some other numbers and I ain't as pretty as that dude. My numbers reflect. <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong. Because they ain't there for knowledge. A lot of them women hoping they get chosen. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. So they have a scale. They ain't on your platform trying to get chosen or yours or yours. They on his. Oh, he's a nice brother when they talk about us. Oh, he's a nice brother. So they hey, have you a know, scale. You know, like when you was younger, right? Like, oh, he fly when it come to you. Yeah, you cute. <laughs> oh, he like my little brother. 
So, 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 <laughs> so. Hold on, Abdul Kareem said, what he said? He said, I would be real, the nor and y'all make sure handsome. Yeah, let the sisters tell us that. Let me, let me, let me, yeah, let me, like, I want to give you a story. And don't just say it because I'm my skin too. I'm going to give you something funny. <laughs> and I had tears in my eyes. I was laughing so hard. So I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to keep all the players hidden. So there was this popular figure who a sister was single. So a brother was on his sister. Good brother, shake, teacher, knowledge, lay it down. He was talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. So y'all having these real talks. I love being a black imam. We can be real. We don't got to crap. We going to lie to each other. So the brother, he's teacher. And ain't none of us had to kick no foreign accent yet either. Right. <laughs> he's talking to the sister, right? Now the sister... On all of our scales, if I showed you her, she's a nice looking sister. She's pretty, right? So he was trying to shoot his shot with the sister. And the sister <laughs> told him, you really not my type. <laughs> but wait a minute. The sister went for the other guy. And I think they may have got married and it didn't work out. So she had a scale and it wasn't Islamic knowledge, right? She had a scale. She looked at this dude instead of this dude. Knowledge, there was no comparison, right? This dude was way more knowledgeable than the other guy. But that other guy was a sharp dresser, you no, know, pretty boy. And this dude was a regular roughneck. Dark skin, light skin. You see my point? There was a scale. So don't tell me that we don't have a scale. We do. We do. All of us. Right? Now, where we settle, I hope we're not that shallow that that is our way of picking a spouse. Right? That's being real. Would you agree or no? I agree. That's real. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, if I could put this out there, natural. What about like a natural woman that has natural hair, natural? Uh, that's. I think that's up there on the value scale. Yes. Of oh, yes, of course. Okay. I have a question uh, for you, for your brothers. Have y'all ever you yourselves or any have y'all met any? Uh, black men that you know find those eyelashes attractive no like not even non-muslims no uh you muted Iman. and i gotta Iman. laugh at this one but this is true with the outstanding ratio of women to men they're becoming a little hardy <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, that is so true. All right, so let's let's, let's push the, the the conversation. So we got Islam, family, obedient. Oh, this Farouk. I'm sorry. This is the longest man. We got so good. Farouk took off, went from the sweat. He don't even got a suit on no more. Look at this guy. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> I had to get comfortable. <laughs> Subhanallah. Oh, Hold no, on. Wait a minute. We can wrap up. You should have got comfortable earlier. Two hours, 43 minutes, and 40 I'm seconds. I'm ready to go home, cuz. Farouk took yeah. the suit off. So part of Yeah. Uh, go ahead, yeah, so we got Islam family. We got to close up within the next 15 minutes, so I have a place to sleep tonight. Right. Let's get this, get this listen, inshallah. Obedience and submissiveness. So can we continue community. next week, focus? Can we agree to that? Sure. Next week, focus subjects about focus. what we talked about. And let's okay. let's really flush it out. Sounds good to me. So take us where we going, Yusuf. We're giving you the, the wheel. Okay. So uh in closing, uh beauty, are there any uh are there any other categories? I would say education. 
education is education is good education is i would say so it's it's not a uh, it's not a pivotal point i believe personally um when it comes to uh the selection of a woman but it is a component it's not a make them or break them but it is important so a woman's education and her uh, how cultured she is mm -hmm. what we can go together what we can experience together what we can share i think is important okay. but i think inversely that is important to women but we need to have this conversation that the i the what men find attractive is not the same thing as what women find attractive for sure for sure i i was about to say i agree with Miriam rose's comment because a lot of times a woman can well even a man for that matter can be extremely okay. intelligent but not be formally yeah. educated yeah and i'm assuming you're talking about uh not ibadat or type of education because we already talked no. about islam yeah we're yeah. talking about worldly secular right. education yeah so education is say, sexy yeah this is, I, I need that and education and intelligence yeah intelligence okay. is important you know how frustrating it is to, to be someone about learning and, and trying to intellectually build with somebody and then come home and they're like uh let's go to hey, hey, hey what's that <laughs> word for someone at uh, farouk you know it when a person is turned on by someone's intelligence, yeah, what's the Sapio. name? What's that word? Sapiosexual. Sapiosexual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sapio. Say it again. Sapiosexual. Sapiosexual. Someone that is attracted, uh, sexually attracted to a person's intelligence. I, I gotta keep that word. I, 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 someone told me about that. I didn't remember how to pronounce it. <laughs> okay. I have some other ones here. Uh, so just said loyalty. You said loyalty? Yeah, loyalty. Oh man, we should have mentioned that earlier. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to I'm trying to get us to where we need to be. I, yeah. I think the thing that goes without mentioning because we're talking about within the confines of Islam. No, come on, brother. Yeah, the Imams know that's not something that's understood. Well, I'm not talking about what what happens. I'm not talking about yeah. what happens, but I think it, it, it goes without saying because it's a given. I'm not talking about what, what happens out there. Uh -huh. That's like saying, you know, I'm looking for someone, I'm looking for a wife that believes in Allah. Mm, right. <laughs> we know that. So no, 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 that's very really important. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That it, ain't it, it is. That's one of the like one nah, of the first steps. I, I think I'm looking for a wife that has the correct belief in Allah. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't not so fast. You're not gonna pass the toe like that. Mm-hmm. But but I think what we've gotten past the dean aspect of it. Now we're getting into what the average, what the general general men uh, look for in a wife, their own subjective yeah. pre preferences. Just like women have a general preference in a wife, and we we as men we know them. We we've heard them before. Yeah, we've heard them. So that was a uh, slip of the tongue, right? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. We we as men. <laughs> <laughs> we as men sorry about that all right so i got loyalty let's let's try to get to 10 a solid 10 mm -hmm. and uh how many we see, got we have seven we have islam family obedient and submissive beauty mm -hmm. education and intelligence loyalty um femininity whoa okay. Here we talk go. back to me man fine what is femininity that femininity yeah. is a must that's a whole discussion. It is. From the man's side, define femininity, and from the woman's side, define masculinity. Okay. I mean, that's a that's a whole program right there. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I see emotional intelligence. I'm not sure if brothers be looking for that, but what, what do y'all think? What's emotional intelligence? I don't know what that means. What do you mean by it? I got another one too. Oh, go ahead. What's that? Oh, okay. I don't think I, any I don't think any man will disagree with femininity. Yeah. I like what Nas said. I think that I need like, to be defined. I like a little sassiness, a lot of class. <laughs> At this point, he doesn't mention the rap lyrics, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. A little sassiness, a lot of class. 
Okay. So what is meant by emotional intelligence? If you can engage me for five seconds. Um, what, what do they mean by that? I'm not sure what the person meant, but uh, by emotional intelligence, know how to read your spouse. When is a good time to say something? When is a good time to advise? When is a good time to criticize? When is a good time to motivate? Uh, what words should be said to a person? How to motivate them or get their goal, you know, inspire them, you know, so okay. being, in, yeah, being uh, precise, being on time with your words and your actions, I think. Knowing how to basically knowing how to feel the temperature of your partner. Yeah, precisely. That's okay. important. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, I will put that. So down. Imam Naeem is not great at it, but you know. Intelligence. <laughs> All right, two more, inshallah, and I'm. It's time for Aisha. I'm gonna break out. Interdependence. And so, what does that mean? As opposed to independence. Interdependence. Okay. Working, you know, somebody compatibility. Okay. As opposed to a woman that depends on you? No, she depends on me. We're interdependent. We depend on each other instead of her trying to be independent from me. You know, that kind of thing. Interdependent. Okay. okay. Mm. I heard, mm, are we all unanimous on that? I think that will be hard to hard to rate until you actually get into the relationship with someone. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I I definitely agree with it, but I don't know how you would try to measure that before you get into before you marry someone. Okay, interdependence. I what about support. compatibility? But what what goes in the compatibility? Yeah, I said that already. Was it put down as a number compatibility? You ain't here because you're low value internet. <laughs> yeah, I don't get enough enough donations. I'm, I'm in the masjid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, man, I'm gonna break out inshallah for salat Aisha. Okay, Sheikh Ona. So can we 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 get an agreement to come back next week? And sum Inshallah. this all up. Inshallah. Because we went almost three hours. That means, and we didn't, we stayed way above our numbers normal. So that's, it's beneficial. I don't think we'd be able to sum this up in next week. For real, I you think you ain't getting on every week. You can forget about it, bro. <laughs> it's not happening. I don't need to get on every day. I don't need to get, I don't I need to be here every day. the idea, bro. Once in a while, we can no. tolerate you. No. I'm joking. No. I, I really want to hear from the community on these topics. I, I really want to hear from the other brothers and the other sisters. It's, it's a conversation long overdue. Not just not just here in the barbershop. Not just in the barbershop. But the beauty shop too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You should hear those conversations in, in the Dominican beauty spa, uh, salons. Those women, have, those women have ideas in their head. They have preferences. They have standards. If they Are they inflated? Are they realistic? A lot of times, they're not. A lot of times. And so we you know we run the risk whenever we have these conversations. Mm -hmm. We run the risk of going outside of the box. People like to put us in, right? That's always risky, you know? But I think that's what makes the Black Imams Roundtable important to us. Where we can be, we can identify with what we know we deal with, right? I think that's important, you know? And I, I don't want us to lose that, you know? Where we start being politically correct and never deal with the reality of our situation. Sometimes we need to be a little edgy. And I think this was, this was a shoot, you know, a shot towards that edginess. Mm -hmm. All righty. All right, y'all want to do y'all summing up? Farouk, we'll give you. 
<laughs> Alhamdulillah, I appreciate everyone's uh, comments in the in the comments section, all their input. Uh, I appreciate the imams for having me on as a guest. Um, and I, again, I hope this conversation is something that we can grow, not needing another uh, influencer like Kevin Samuels or or um, the male type or someone of the female type. This conversation that can happen organically amongst us because it is needed. It is needed. And uh, I, ju I just look forward to the day that uh, both brothers and sisters can find what they're looking for in a husband or in a wife. And that's all I have to say. Alhamdulillah. Imam Fahim. Man, let's just love each other, you know, whatever your preference is. You know, let's get back to love. Alhamdulillah, one of my parting thoughts is that, and, and I say this often, I pray that we can become intellectually mature enough to stop letting other people's issues become our issues when they weren't originally our issues. I mean, going back to what Imam Amin mentioned earlier about what affects black people in general, if also affects black Muslims. In the black community, black women and black men come from a history of oppression, subjugation, intimidation, and like Malcolm said, in the air, all kinds of other, uh, other Asians, right? Together, black men and black women. But black men and women have been tricked into believing that the other is the enemy. Black men and black women have been tricked into this uh, idea that the reason, speaking from the women's perspective, of our the reason for our problem is, you know, the black man ain't doing what he's supposed to be. And the black man has been tricked into thinking, oh, the reason why we're in this situation is because the black women have betrayed us. And so the black people, black our black people in general have have been tricked into falling into that argument. That was a white argument. And we took that argument on, right? And now you see the same thing in the Muslim community. We are pointing fingers at each other when we, we're both suffering from the same enemy. We're ignoring that enemy and we turned each other into the enemy. So I just I just pray that, you know, especially us Muslims, we're supposed to be people who think a little bit deep, deeper than that. We should be a little bit more mature in that and be able to critically think and understand what's going on. And so I just I just pray you know, like Imam Fahim said, that we all just love each other. We're supposed to be Muslims, right? And in the Malmu'minuna Iqwa, the believe indeed, the believers are brothers. That includes men and women, not just men and not just women. The believers, if we believers, we're supposed to have a, a certain level of love for each other. So I just pray that we get back to it, inshallah, and just at least be uh, aware and acknowledge of how much outsiders ways of thinking are affecting us in my closing thoughts what i would hope from us is that we stop pretending i think we need to really deal with who we are and raise the bar from where we are identify who we really are, not who we want to be, who we are, right? And then raise the bar, which we all know we want to be. I think that's a big issue with us. You know, we all got issues. We all struggling. We all going through it. And we mask all that thing with false concepts of piety. Uh, 
I just think we need to get to that point. And that if we can accomplish one thing with the round table, that we can make it okay to be who we are, right? And we're not saying that don't raise the bar and try to become more pious. We should do that. But at the same time, don't neglect what you're really going through. So that, that that's for me. I would look for that. You know, our teachers used to tell us about Imam Ghazali. One, people don't like to read the books of Imam Ghazali because they tell you who you really are, not who you want to be. The books of Imam Ghazali tell you who you really are, not who you want to be. And I would have a suggestion with everyone, lastly, don't take none of this stuff personal. Even if it personally hits you, don't take it personal because you're not going to hear what is really being said, right? If you take it personal, like, is me. No. Try to see what is being said and not how it personally affects you. It is easy to deal with the conversation. When it becomes personal, you're not even listening no more. And that could be for any of us. So, inshallah, even if some, some of the things that we said apply directly to you, it's not about just you. Right? And that's for all of us. Inshallah, may Allah make it easy for us. I hope that we said something that is beneficial and that we all benefit from. And Abdul Kareem, I got you covered. I, chill, relax. I got you covered. But some of us are looking for smoke that this, this platform is not for that smoke. That's personal stuff. We ain't dealing with that, right? We want something that's going to better us all, even if it is criticism of us all and it's going to make us better, we could take that, right? So I close with that. Whoever's going to close us out with dua. You gonna close us out on this one, Imam. Okay, I go to the store. Okay. Right. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbana atmilna nurana wa kfil lana innaka ala kuli shayin qadir. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma kfil lana wa lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Al-ahya'i minhum wal amwat. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته